Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. And if you threw a party, invited everyone you knew, you would see the biggest gift would be from me. And the card attached would say, Sing it, boys. Thank you for being, Thank a, for friend. being a friend. <laughs> Thank you. Bum, bum, bum. We were in choirs as kids. At <laughs> not least me. I was not poor. <laughs> beautiful rob <laughs> well done um and and rest in peace betty white what a legend what a wonderful wonderful soul uh and i mean i was reared on golden girls i know you guys were too i mean Absolutely. how how unlikely like at one point we were watching the a-team and the very next it was the golden girls and we were riveted hey our favorite people were, were old ladies it's crazy <laughs> well, i mean it's of weird course they were you we were like, young our oh. mothers are probably about, I don't know, the same age or even older than the Golden Girls were. Or yeah. These characters. Well, still, the, mm. the craziest bit of trivia that, I mean, I only learned a couple of years ago was that actually the grandmother, you know, Mr. the Getty. grandmother of, she was the, the youngest, actually. <laughs> I know. Kind of bakes your noodle, doesn't it? <laughs> Anyways, we're well <laughs> deep into episode 231 and we haven't even introduced ourselves. My what? name is Steve. I am your host tonight, today, this morning, this afternoon, whenever, sometime in the future. And I'm joined by the South African boys of G.I. Joburg. Hello. Hello. You deal. Uh, well, yeah, it's Paul, <laughs> not Blanche. <laughs> Way to drop the ball, Paul. And it's Sorry, a dude. Golden Boy Rob. Uh, oh. Not as old as the Golden Girls, but um, yes, getting there. Getting white. Oh, we, we all, we're almost there, you know. Halfway, <laughs> halfway. Well, not even, actually. Jeez. 20th, 20th, we're almost there. <laughs> yeah, episode, episode, uh, what, I don't know, 800 and something, we'll be doing it in our 60s. And hello everyone in the cool. live chats. It's Darren, it's Matthew, Casey from Podcast from the Pit. We got G.I. Gary from uh, the Motopod. And Johanza73 is here. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us, gents. And we are once again reflecting on the year that was. I'm sure there's plenty of that floating around. With a twist, we're going to play a little bit of a... A little bit of a game at the end of this episode to kind of just realign or refresh our favorites in the line, our least favorites, our most hated, our most underappreciated gems. We're going to be discussing a whole range of topics and just reminding ourselves what it is we love so much about G.I. Joe. But uh, I'm back. I, I missed a week um, because, man, we had quite a mixed um, guest list, should I say, at my Christmas party. But uh, I swear I didn't put Gastro on the guest list. Someone, <laughs> someone brought a plus one. Yeah, oh, intestinal yeah. distress. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It wasn't my cooking, guys. Let me just put that on record. Oh, we know. We know. Like, yeah, I, th I think we joked you? about it last week. I don't we know. We joked about it, but not, we were but, like, um, "It's not your cooking." <laughs> it's not, it's well, definitely not your cooking. But guys, well, I I had a Christmas party lined up with um, friends of Kim's, and like three days before the big day, they dropped us because she's pregnant, and you know, Omicron has reached town Townsville, so the concern was like, let's keep it very nuclear. So that left us kind of without any alternative plans <laughs> so we decided to have like i guess an orphan's christmas um anyone who didn't have plans kind of fell into to our little nest and while i do think that ultimately you want to have the christmas meats on christmas like turkey and gammon i realized they don't oh. sell they don't sell gammon in australia or at least not widely say what um, they do christmas hams and it's not the same thing. It's just not hmm. the same. Anyway, yeah. so I, I, I decided to forego the headache of like overstressing my little oven. I mean, cook times on a turkey and a gammon are completely different. So, ugh. Anyways, um, I just had a barbecue, a braai. A say. barbecue. So I, I couldn't exactly <laughs> screw that up, could I? No, not at all. But when you've got African, young you kids, just can't. like 
meal had to be served at 12 noon. So I was... Oh, Lord. I, what time I did you lighting, start that fire? I was lighting fires at 10 a.m. to get the Yo. coals nice and ready. Yes, so, you yeah, can tell they've never bribed before, man. Yes. The only time <laughs> I've made a wait. fire... The only time I've made a fire at 10 a.m. is to, like, boil water for coffee, XA. Exactly. So, <laughs> this is XA. <laughs> Fucking weird, man. <laughs> Guys, for our listeners out there, if you ever come to South Africa and you get to do a bride, just understand that the fire gets lit around 12, maybe 1, <laughs> but it must get, and you maintain its heat so that you can at least get through the rugby, you know, without having to worry about it too much. And then we throw a little bit of meat on. So you're realistically looking at about 5, maybe 6 o'clock that we actually eat. Because then by that time, everybody's already come to your house and they've brought you uh, not brought you, but they've brought some potato salad. They've brought their own bloody meat that they want to throw on. It's a whole uh, spiel. Someone always so we brings don't do it a in the morning. full bird chicken. And you're like, yes. oh my God, that's going to take <laughs> an hour. And potato hour salad. <laughs> uh, Anyways, it was a raging success and the orphans were very happy. <laughs> um, hey, Kim, Kim was Christmas a, a Kim. delight. Christmas Kim. Um, we had Venezuela, uh, Hong Kong. Uh, Vietnam, South Africa, Singapore, all represented. It was delightful. Hey. And it ended up with a massive building of Elliot's um, Christmas Duplo. Uh, fortunately, we had a, a <laughs> five-year-old who powered through the whole thing while the, the toddlers just gummed on bricks. And then it all wound they're up based, in the I pool. Mean, they were holding him up, I'm sure. They were holding him up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as as any Christmas should end up, it it, it it all ended up ended up in the pool, and I was so grateful that it did because I spent a good chunk of time sweeping that fucking place out. I mean, it was a state, and I would have been so upset if no one went out there. Anyways, that was my Christmas. I fortunately got to hear about yours um, via the last episode. Well done, holding the fort without me. Thanks, boys. Hell yeah, we did it. We managed. We yeah. managed. We heard, and we heard all about our things we got for Christmas. What did you get? What, what's your new what? Christmas shit? Yeah. Oh, man. Well, um, I did do a video if you wanted visual aids, but I suppose um, I've got some pictures here somewhere. I, I got prefer the my age oral. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> uh, I did get the <laughs> Python Conquest X30, which was sublime. Oh, Thank you to a... JC. He hooked up Joel from Order of Battle Pod uh, some months ago with uh, the Ghost from Star Wars and I think in a, a, a Quinjet. Um, well, JC's a, a, a good buddy and he sent this literally on a slow boat from China. But it got yeah. here before the big day and I had the joy of unboxing this thing and slightly less joyful stickering of it. Uh, Paul, you've got the Tiger Rat that was also the, the Target exclusive. Yes. Released yeah. in 2013. And you warned me about this after you finished stickering her up that like these stickers suck. <laughs> just <laughs> suck so bad. So bad. <laughs> they just do not inspire much confidence. Um, the no. adhesive is bad. Um, I had something strange happen to me. Like I did the whole ship while Elliot was asleep. And leaving the most crucial element of a python conquest for last can anyone venture a guess to what the most crucial elements of a python conquest is the eyes thank you paul ding ding mm. ding the eyes so the instruction sheet was bogus it had a few things wrong already so i learned not to trust it to my detriment because it actually was correct when it came to the eyes I flipped oh. the eyes. I was like, no, left needs to be on the right side. Right needs to be on the left side. And the whole time I had your voice in my head, Paul, saying, you don't want the eyes to not have enough of a slant to them because otherwise they look sleepy. Sleepy. <laughs> but <laughs> but the, ti the tiger force eyes are for mammals and the python patrol eyes are for snakes. And they should be like straighter because mm. they've got that like reptilian um slitted sort of eye iris uh, am i explaining myself correctly i i, yeah. I understand yeah, what the you're middle saying, of yeah. the eye yeah, it's different. so so in order for that to read correctly you need it to be along sort of a more flat plane mm. anyways i cocked up six love had the left on the right and the right on the left and guess who as i'd make this discovery guess who's waking up 
<laughs> oh, no. So I don't want to like tell Kim, listen, can you handle the kid right now? I'm playing with I've my plane. Sticker. <laughs> I've got like some crucial sticker placement to do. <laughs> so I got him out of bed, like got him out of his sleep sack, put him in the lounge, hoping that he'd just play with his Duplo. No, no, no. He's climbing my leg. And I'm like, I have to do something about the sticker now before like the adhesive... I don't know, marries any further to the plastic. <laughs> like, this is my thought process. Like, strike while the iron's hot. If I'm going to do a peel and replace on these already shoddy stickers, i got to do it, like, yesterday. So I set about to do it. I even trimmed the edge that I peeled it from. And miracle of miracles, got it into the right position while he's climbing on me. <laughs> <laughs> That's skill, dude. But nice. then... The shitty like top layer flips off. Like you oh. know how they've got like a sleeve, like a, a transparent uh, Yeah, like... it's the UV coating. Ugh. Yes. So that, that uh. flicked flicked clean off, just I don't know, cracked right off the the sticker. The it snake didn't... was shedding. Fortunately <laughs> it didn't it didn't take much of the print. So the print was intact. But I, I'm worried that it's now gonna be exposed to the elements and go shitty. Will it pull? Well, uh over time yeah it will it will it'll definitely get dirty and go yellow and stuff at some point but dude are we so talking like i years? should put a clear piece of tape over it no, yeah that, that nail, might help yeah. nail, nail polish on it put some nail varnish on it <laughs> only, like oh god only... Rob, if you want to eat through the plane <laughs> nice. no 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 nail <laughs> varnish no, he's Rob's gonna have wrong. like one, one like um cloudy eye. It's gonna be cool eventually. <laughs> that's that's what I'm worried about with the nail varnish. Um, uh, you could use an ac an acrylic clear coat that you can get from a hobby store. I know um Australia has a very good one called Hobby Co. <sighs> hobby Co. If you're listening, too extreme, too extreme. Oh yeah, Hobby Co. Sponsor us, thanks. Yeah, that would be awesome. But uh, we're not a Gundam channel, so they won't. But they're cool. They really are cool guys. Anyway. Um, you can you can use a, an acrylic clear coat that would actually work very well. I know some guys might even suggest a Future, uh, the floor polish to you as well. That's something, but I don't know what the Australian blend of that is like. So yeah, um, I've put um, like transparent tape over stickers that needed it in the past, and like stickers that were like lifting um, and the adhesive sucked. I put mm -hmm. like a piece of tape that was just slightly bigger than the dimensions of the sticker and that holds it down anyways i'm gonna move on from the python patrol conquest i did shoot a review feel free to check it out uh, it's on the channel did an unboxing and once again thank you jay for sending it my way but uh, that wasn't the only thing if you remember i was very big into beast wars and did uh put in an offer for the original 1995 optimus primal yes yeah so Ooh. got him i got him hey yeah so steven's man. showing it to showing him to us right now live guys the thing about optimus primes and primal in this case like they always are loaded with features right but the features mm -hmm. are peripheral parts like add-on parts or uh, a trailer as is mm. the case with probably 90 percent of the primes out there when you've got a beast mode transformer all of the features have to be integrated they can't be a piece that's lying on the floor so the genius of this toy is exactly how much stuff is crammed into him i'm gonna see if i can get this without leaving anything out um shoulder cannons that are spring loaded and flip full so, okay so nice. that is crazy and have spring fire missiles in them. That store behind Optimus Prime's head in sort of the backpack area. Okay, moving over to the left fist. Uh, come on, camera. Don't fail me now. Riveting listening, of course. Flips <laughs> out to be another spring fire missile launcher that uses the Whoa, same compatible Gorilla missiles. Arm boner. <laughs> Dude, it's extreme, man. It is it's so good. It just breaks apart and becomes a, a launcher. As it should be. Um, the other fist, they don't skimp, hey? The other fist holds... Uh, I love how this um, is a toy that was made to be an awesome toy. You know, what does the other wow. fist hold? A mace. A mace with Dude, a very that's... distinctive head. 
um, or, yes. or sort of ball. If you are a fan of the Kingdom line, you should yes. recognize this as one of the bony boys. Totally. Totally. It's his head. Yeah. I've got one of those. And um, yeah. More weapon storage. The back holds two blades. Oh, yes. Oh, I remember seeing that in the Toy Fair magazine. So well equipped. He's so Dude, good. He's gutted up. He's mad. And the blades, you can kind of either have them in, in each hand or you can kind of stick the one in the top of the fist and the other in the bottom of the fist to make kind of... Ooh, and then he, he like... Double blade. Rotates what? his fist. When things get hot, have... you can fan it cold. Well, he does style. have an action feature, which I haven't really been able to work out just yet. Nothing is terribly instructional, but like there's a tab on the back, a lever. And if you manipulate it, his arms do kind of either beat his chest or spin around. Um, hey. There's a myriad of switches that that I need to investigate, but this toy is freaking awesome. I'm sure I've left something out. Oh yeah, he's got this mutant face mask, which was a feature of early Beast Wars toys that had been yeah that like dropped. Oh dude, that is so cool. That has got to that's got to do. I, I'm telling you that has something to do with the Japanese Beast Wars comic or Beast Wars. I don't doubt it. Yeah, that's. But I love how that toy is just made to be played with. Like it's a, it's a fun, oh, so crazy good. ass toy. It's got nothing to do with the show. It's just like really just a great toy. <laughs> yeah. No, it's got a lot to do with the show. The show was kind of a, a watered down departure from this. But like he definitely did have arm cannons in the show. Um, and look, yeah, as I say, the, like the features were there. The features yeah, were there. The the features are all there and present in the show to a lesser or greater degree. It's ironic that the first episode of Beast Wars that I watched after getting this guy in hand was called Guerrilla Warfare. And in it, Optimus Primal gets gets like a brain parasite and goes crazy, like it goes berserker. So he, it's the episode where he just, he just shows off all of his weaponry. Um, <laughs> Dinobot that makes the suggestion. Likely. He's like... This 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 Autobot or this Maximal is a machine of war. Let's just point him in the direction of the Predacon's base and let him go. <laughs> Which is precisely what, precisely what they do. What a sweet episode. Anyways, I'm Man. loving this toy and I'm gonna tip my hand already. Um, my best non GI Joe toy of twenty twenty one, Optimus Primal, all the way. Nice. Very, Great very toy. cool. Mm, a wish that was I suppose 20 years in the fulfilling and it's ironic that like i talked the seller down from 85 bucks to 65 um the reissue is now selling in big w at a clearance price of 55 dollars. so they've come down 30 dollars from 85 um so it's a bit cheaper in fact but it's still according to the reviews not that great hmm. you know where the original feels tight feels quality the remake, as is so often the sad case, like it's a little little loosey goosey, plastic quality and all that, joints on stuff, that sort of thing. Anyways, that's enough Transformer talk, I think. I think for now, but <laughs> unless you're gonna change change the, the agenda to Transformers, Pauli. Transformers. So I gotta say, mm -hmm. like, um, thankfully, and that's such a weird thing to say. I haven't bought anything or gotten anything new since Christmas. I Whew, moving on then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so no, that's it's great. There's nothing wrong with that at all. <laughs> but know? I think this is a great opportunity to do a wrap up on our halls of 2021. Like, what was your favorite acquisition? Be it Joe, be it non Joe. Um, I know some folks have shown us in enormous generosity this year, this year past. Um, I'm almost gonna say let's let's hold off. Uh, nominating those as favorites because you know I, would, I don't, wouldn't want to show favoritism. I mean, like for instance, I was sent from Range Viper Rob the Snake Eyes Double Zero classified, mm. the one with the like the ninja weapons and the, the mm. little oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. Um, but by the same token, I was sent a Starduster from Gary. So like, like <laughs> you can't level the playing field. These are amazing toys, all. But exactly. I will also have a special mention that in that box from gary came a toy that i had no idea i'd love as much as i do it has no reason rhyme or reason being this this cool but i really really dig the manta 
digged it so much that uh, I, I the first play motion we shot of 2021. Cobra don't surf, baby. <laughs> Showing it off. Love that toy. It's cool how stuff like that surprises you, hey? Like I know. And and look, this hasn't been everyone's experience of the Manta. I've been told that they fall apart very easily. The one that Gary sent me must have been stock that was being sold later, is my suspicion. Because I think yeah. this thing was still like a a premium that you could send away for like into the nineties. The plastic just feels very new and very untouched and very like, like you know how some Joe vehicles feel creaky. This feels mm. like like fresh, like it's freshly minted, like everything feels kind of waxy and and pliable. Anyways, <laughs> it's just my read of it. It's great fun and I it holds together nicely, which isn't everyone's experience of it. Um and I, I loved playing playing with it that fateful day when Jinx took on Lamprey. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. Uh, for me, 2021 has been an exceptionally good G.I. Joe year as far as toys go. Um, you know, having found so many local guys that sell G.I. Joes being part of like a local WhatsApp group uh, that has them, uh, you know, and then also like being able to, you know, the one or two small purchases that I've done uh, overseas that are like sitting at Bart's house <laughs> um, currently and uh, so it's kind of been like, it's been a really great year for me for GI Joe. And I'll tell you why, uh, this year saw the arrival of a complete Destro, you know, like a complete and very minty fresh, fresh de Destro, a Cobra claw came my way, which I absolutely love. Um, a Cobra, the original snake armor, which is the cool white snake armor, uh, is something that arrived and came my way, which also really dig a Ram cycle, uh, also vintage. These are like great you know, toys that have come my way. Um, and then, I mean, that's just to mention a few uh, of, of what found its way to me. But one of my absolute favorites uh, that arrived this year has been low light gear. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Like, I know I've mentioned this a lot, but like having this really cool figure in my hand for a long time without its gear that was uh, gifted to me by Jim Godfrey quite a while back. Um, to finally have its gear and have him as a complete figure really elevated it beyond just being a cool sculpt. It, it just took it to being quite a great toy and, and one of my favorites for this year. But it's actually not my absolute favorite Joe purchase this year. My absolute favorite Joe purchase this year is this guy. <laughs> if you told me in the beginning of this year, somebody would be like peddling off an art back and that I would Tuck have him, I'd be like, whatever mm -hmm. you know yeah tiger force outback it's just too cool like there's no way i thought i would get this fit and i actually wrote this figure off i think in our most wanted uh episode i think i sort of just put this up there as like oh it'll be cool if it comes my way you know but i don't think it's gonna and here it is and um if you listen to the last episode uh that's two th at two thirty you'll know that it was quite an experience i mean managed to, you know, Celia and I went to Centurion, which was quite a long drive. And like I said, I got this thing in my hands. I knew it was there and my hands were shaking. <laughs> the guy that sold it to me was absolutely awesome. He was such a, gra a great seller. He was so cool about how he dealt with it. You know, like how, how we did the transaction. He just sort of went, hey, you like Tiger Force, right? And I'm like, yeah, I love Tiger Force. He's like, oh, what would be, what would you offer me for like a Tiger Force outback? So I sent him an offer and um, he's like, Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll think about it. And I and then I even said, like, listen, dude, it's gonna come to a good home. Like, it. I mean, what I was love the Tiger Force. Um, I offered him nine hundred, for starters. Mm. Yeah, very good. And then, um, he played like he was like really cool, and he's like, I just want to think about it and stuff. And I was like, no problem. Then I sent him a message uh, the following day to say, listen, um. I don't want you to feel like I'm lowballing you or whatever. I'm going to take it up to one, two, but I can't go higher than that. Um, and he's like, shit, dude. Yeah. Okay. Like, that's perfect. That's cool. But uh, hold on. I'm just busy thinking. I'm like, no, no problem. I don't want to rush you. And then he sends me a message much later to go. Yeah. I had to let you sweat a bit. You were going to get it from the beginning anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. How can I get it to you? And I'm like, well, I know, I believe that you're in Joburg or whatever. And he's like, yeah, I am. I'm like, how close? He's like Centurion. I'm like, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> I'm there tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Get in the yeah. car, Celia. 
<laughs> Let's go. We're um, going. That is 900 uh, or 1,200 South African is 75 US. This is for a Tiger Force Outback with web gear, backpack, flashlight, the correct Unbroken one. Unbroken crotch. I'm I was project. leaving that for last, but yes, he's in possession <laughs> of his dick. Uh, he just has a, a strap missing from the, the machine gun, which yeah. to my mind, like, I prefer it not to Looks be present. Better. Mauler Joe said it in the comment thread, but uh, absolutely, it's, it, it's able to be used without the strap. If you had the hmm. strap there, you can't really pose him correctly because you've got a semi-rigid plastic strap you know inhibiting his forearm uh, it's either going to be on one side or the other mm. and it's probably going to be on the outside of the forearm which always looks naff when yeah you're strapped there mm -hmm. yeah and and it, and also something cool to mention i mean it seems like your outback and my outback are the same with the gun which is pretty cool you know so yes yeah that, yeah. that is pretty cool i'd i'd rather stockpile <laughs> guns with no straps to be honest yeah so yeah, I mean, he did come with a bum knee for anybody who listened to the last episode. He's um, his right knee. To the last episode. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> his right knee, um, the left knee here on the image, uh, or the knee on the left hand side, uh, it was completely frozen. The joint was completely frozen. Like, so I was mine. Yeah. But I <laughs> had a less invasive uh, method. I actually just added oil and that freed, unfroze it because I'm I'm loath to, to no I did take the thigh apart took the thigh apart worked it off the the pin and just oiled it up I didn't sand anything or buff anything my Anyways, logic here you snapped quickly, it <laughs> no, my logic here was I wasn't going to try and bend it while it was still connected to the thigh because my my thinking was like hey if I break the knee I can fix that. If it breaks something on the thigh, I can't fix that. Well, I can't. Mm. It's going to bug me. So I unscrewed the thigh and, and made it as safe as I could. Uh, yes. Did you yeah. break it while trying to work the yes the knee yeah. the, the, the the lower half of the leg off the pin? Yes. Yeah. That's that's where it broke. Or well, that's when it broke. And thankfully, it left a <sighs> very very small cavity. <laughs> no, I I've, I've done it successfully before on many other figures, but this one. When I tell you guys that this was glued, I. Uh, I can, well, not glued, but it was like so frozen that I actually feel like this was a defect because there was no, even when I drilled the hole through the knee to create, um, to create a post, a hole for the post to go through, even when I was drilling a hole, nothing came loose. You know, sometimes when you drill drilling into something very carefully, I might add, you know, sometimes you get that little bit of play and then that the little piece can move, you know, if you think about it, like it would start moving with your rotating motion and it didn't do that it was it was mm. almost few like when i looked at it it looked fused so i think that th there's a high possibility that straight out of the packaging i don't think this figure has ever had its knee bent until oh yeah, yeah. absolutely so that's the sad I mean, that's the, the thing the tiger print on yours is perfect there's been right? no play on that very intricate design so hats off to you paul you have a mint tiger force art pack have fun with that. <laughs> Yay. And it's got a ninja the, kicking action. <laughs> the knowledge that you have Tiger Force Outback in that condition with a dick has all of a sudden made me very reckless with mine. I'm like, <laughs> Joe has one. So now I I am free. I like once once you snap Stop your dick free. off. You are truly free, my friends. Because <laughs> I I just can't put this toy down now. I'm like, I I have now got license to just gaan te keren, my bro. But um, <laughs> we've gotten your your top GI Joe of 2021. Rob, your top 2021 GI Joe. I'm gonna guess his countdown. <laughs> <laughs> Considering, yeah, he was my one and only. Um, but even if he hadn't been, I think he probably would have still been my number one. He's an awesome figure. I'm glad to own him. Um, he just looks so good. Um, mm. uh, he looks fantastic. You, you were actually pricing him out. You, I mean, it wasn't. It was a very easy Christmas gift to give because you had mentioned him on a previous podcast. What? Yeah, was no, the I, right I had started. On? 
I don't know. It's just I I've, I've always liked Countdown. I mean, I mm. think it's you know, I kind of personalized him myself. I mean, you know, I had a story for him before I, I knew exactly who he was. Um <laughs> Just you and L, you were working on that <laughs> stereotype. It's, it's his skin color is just so different. It feels he if he doesn't. I feel like he really is Indian. But anyway, that's you mm. know neither here nor there. Um, A lot of positive yeah, comments there, by the way, on the last uh, episode <laughs> regarding regarding old countdown. Well, that's good. So, it's with a, a name figure. like David Dubosky. I'm pretty sure he's more likely to invite you around for Shabbat instead of um, <laughs> or Festival Kari of or something. I don't hello. know. Instead of what? Diwali or something. Yeah. Well, that's it. So Thank hello. You, yeah. <laughs> but also, way to go! Like you know, like I never, I've never thought of him as being Indian. So for me, like I that, don't know, it, it's just you guys have changed is, that he, in he, my mind. He feels, I mean, maybe it's just really pale, but like his skin, his skin tone is very different from other GI Joes. Like I don't think there's another GI Joe that has his skin tone. Mm. Yeah, it could be. I mean, okay. he spends so much time in his his suit. You know, he kind of doesn't get any sunlight. So he's very pale, um, but it's almost like a deathly pale. Um, no, I, I don't know. I I'd go the other way. I think he's got kind of a walnut complexion. Yeah, yeah, but it, it feels a like deeper. a white. It, it, but yeah, it's deep, but it's. I can't explain it. I mean, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. This is why you have we to, to GI Joburg. You have to experience it for yourself. Exactly. Rob, if I wasn't like recording a podcast tonight, I would be watching Matrix. Ah. I, have to, I have to give it a chance. I think uh, no. I think you should. I mean, I've I've since watched. I mean, I still hate it, but I've since watched a couple <laughs> of reviews. And I can kind of see where people can appreciate it. Um, it, it go, if you go into it, I don't know, you can appreciate it for maybe what they're trying to do, but not as a good movie. Hmm. You can kind Look, of, you can go like, you can, as like a meta thing. You can be like, oh, okay, I see what they're Mark, doing there. Mark I, Kermode I of the BBC is kind of my go-to for non-spoiler reviews. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I will align with his view that like, it has a an interesting concept that would have made for a great short film, but of course, once that premise is on the table, and it just has to become a Matrix movie from then then onwards, you know, an action film, uh, that's yeah, when it kind of falls flat. Yeah, but I think so you I'm, also I'm, find I'm, I'm in it for the first act. I'll be I'll be there, riveted. Like, how yeah, that's are they the doing? thing. I mean, I think people. I think it is. It feels like it's two different movies. You know, there's the first half where they you're kind of exploring like how are they here. You know what's happened since then and what is this what is this life that he's in now and how does this work and then obviously then the second half is him doing whatever he you know is the matrix part of it um you know that type of movie yeah i i, I would agree with that but um i did see a better movie i uh, that oh. i enjoyed immensely um you know you just go into it you turn your brain off and it's it's a fantastic movie and that is spider-man no way home Excellent. i I'm glad you brought that up. Before I forget, <laughs> you're absolutely, I'm going to leave everyone on tenterhooks wondering what your opinion is about to be. And I just want to say, Tim Wilde, I think I've seen him in the chats, also um, awesome host of Saints on Cinema, had me round for his Spider-Man No Way Home uh, review discussion. Nice. Uh, it's, it's a, I had a great time. Um, and I would suggest anyone who w wants to know what the hell a G.I. Joe guy has to say about this other movie, um, <laughs> scroll on down to the, the, the description to this podcast and uh, uh, the link will be there. Well, I'll, but, I'll definitely Rob, be... be <laughs> it, yeah, you're absolutely right. It, 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 was, it was definitely... It, it's, a, it's just like any other Marvel movie. It's very... I think you're right. It's very dumb, oh, but yeah. it's entertainingly so. You know, it's, it's it's not about the actual structure of what's happening. It's it's what they've chosen to incorporate into the movie. The reasons for why the, the elements are there, it doesn't matter. It's just that they are yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't even bother trying to explain it any more than the peripheral, because th what this movie is doing in a very, very blunt, you know, dumb sense is is getting the maximum number of meat on the seat <laughs> with, with just a wow factor but like don't don't think about it too much you know yeah no never think too much about it but i mean in the moment i mean as it is with most 
modern movies over the last what seven eight nine i don't know ten years it is meant to keep you entertained in the moment it, mm. you know you, you're supposed to leave mm. the cinema going oh that was fantastic you're like wow just don't think or too much afterwards perhaps but in, in the, the moment, most it is. cynical sense in the most cynical sense like it's supposed to like for someone like me remind me that it was worth the price of admission at least once or twice maybe three times over like yeah. I don't feel cheated by this movie. I don't feel angry. I'm just like, yeah, that was that was worth it. I'm glad I saw it. Yeah, I would definitely say so. And it also was the first film I've seen since um, since COVID. And mm. I, I, I gotta say, Stair Kinical, our local um, cinema chain here, they they do a very good job. Everything is very clean. The the methods of getting the tickets were very straightforward. Um, getting your snacks, you basically book everything beforehand on the website. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it kind of limits options when you're trying to choose like snacks and things. It's like it's large combo or <laughs> regular combo. <laughs> you know, so you, there's no choice that. there. I can't, I can't go with my smaller cool drink and and a big popcorn, which is what I always used to do. I had to get the bloody big, um, you know, a cream soda in honor of Stephen <laughs> oh. <laughs> and my large popcorn. But yeah, God. very well, still well run. They did a really good nice. job, and and generally people. Keep, I think everyone still did their spacing. I mean, it was just, you know, it's appropriate. Oh, thank um, goodness for that. I remember seeing Tenet last year, or not the year before last. And this was back when they were still spacing everyone out in the theater. Mm. But these plonkers just decided to sit next to me anyways. It's like, no, I booked thankfully, the seat and it yeah. blocked out all the seats around it. And this asshole wants to sit you right next sit to oh me. my god I can't in an it. empty theater i thought maybe this guy's just <laughs> trolling me. he's like he's all of a sudden gonna start coughing really loudly in my oh, direction no way what a chop but guys. thankfully yeah, people kept in themselves or if they were together like couples they would still sit next to each other but i mean they didn't compromise other people you. here then. yeah exactly they, yeah. they stayed on their island so to yeah speak. exactly and while I'm we're on the topic of person. live cinema experience um saw dune loved it thought that the scale of it was thank epic god. just so good um <laughs> paul's like really thank god you liked a sci-fi movie finally <laughs> <laughs> but um as uh -oh. i was sort of sitting down um i noticed a gaggle of about half a dozen 20 something girls early 20 somethings walking in oh. and i was like oh shit i was actually talking to railroad from Bergforce um on facebook chats and i mentioned this to him and i said god what are they here for must be <laughs> momoa and he was like nah charlemagne's also got his following but i i then shot back with like i hope the bass on the soundtrack is able to drown them out <laughs> which darren bless him he says oh it will <laughs> <laughs> I was not disappointed. Whoa. It was, it was, oh, so good. Jeez, such a cool movie. Oh and <laughs> just like, oh, man, I don't want to drone on about it, but <laughs> we're at at a stage where photo real computer imagery, it's it's indistinguishable. Like everything has weight, and it has incredible like like fidelity in terms of the lighting conditions that you find on. Arrakis like the first time they spark up an ornithopter they make a yeah. meal of it cinematically and just the weight of those yeah. wings like starting up and starting to move and starting to gyrate and like if you don't know what an ornithopter looks like think about how a dragonfly the insect not the G.I. Joe vehicle <laughs> how that works and if you scale that up to you know allow for a crew and some passengers like just how incredible that machine would look as it starts up. Oh, so good. So, so bloody good. <laughs> <laughs> and on the topic of dunes, Kim's got us starting to watch Doctor Fucking Who. <laughs> hey, Can I I'm gonna this. hijack I'm gonna hijack some airtime quickly because I need it. <laughs> I've got a very question a very important movie related I question to a ask. Podcast. And so, oh, by the way, Rob, I'm yes. going to guess that your, your favorite non-G.I. Joe toy, I'm not even going to say toy, thing of 2021 was your Jack from The Shining. Your Funko Pop. Oh, absolutely. Did yes, Jack? Okay. Yes, that was still, my favorite non-G.I. Joe toy. Still, I still <laughs> know my friend. 
<laughs> yes, Paul. Well, over to you. you. Paid attention. Well, I, I want to ask um, you guys, the members of the Bergforce in our live chat, and then also please put it down in the comments. So when I went to go watch um, Afterlife, that's Ghostbusters, I was with um, Celia, of course. And then my assistant, Ruby, she came with us because she also really loves Ghostbusters and it was fun. It was like a family outing. Anyway, so we get to the concession stand to go and buy drinks because New Metro does allow you to order all, the, all of that stuff ahead of time. But I like to play it old school personally. And so we're standing in the queue and we're getting our things. And, you know, as you do, you know, you're like, OK, my love, what do you want to get? You know, and she's like, oh, I want a large slush puppy. And I'm like, do you want popcorn? She's like, yeah, I totally like to get some popcorn. I'm like, no problem. And then I order my my spiel, which is like large Coke, and large popcorn, etc. And then Ruby is like, you know, she also wants like a slush puppy and some popcorn. You know, no problem. Wait, who's there. Ruby? Ruby is my assistant. Um, yeah. Hey. So like that's oh, no, no, that's fine. Double dipping, bro. No, man, no, no. Just it was like a treat for her. Shame. I mean, she's been working like really <laughs> super hard. No, but I mean, like she'd been working you, really you, super hard and stuff with us, you, and it you was hate her, don't girls. you? Yeah, of course. But I mean, it's just it's a cool thing. I mean, she we'd been working like super, super hard. She'd been oh, kicking ass. The popcorn. And it was just a way to just say thank you, whatever. It's just like a thing. And also, she just wanted to come out and watch movies with us because she doesn't really get, you know, she doesn't have other friends. I mean, she is also regarded as a friend. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I don't want to get into. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to get into that. That side of it is like whatever. And then Celia is like, oh, I want to get a box of Astros. And dudes. Mm. In South Africa, and I'm, I'm sure it's the same in most parts of the world, my knee-jerk reaction to her asking for a box of Astros was like, no. <laughs> and yeah. she like looks at me, I'm like, no, not here. It's 60 Rand. It's 60 yeah. Rand. It's re re that's almost half the price of the movie ticket, okay? You know, so I'm like, oh, so she's like, oh, shit. I'm like, what has she done? I'm like, so I, was like, I don't want to be like that guy in front of the poor lady behind the, the counter i just like sort of lean in and i'm just like you um you can go, we can go and get them for you from Ryan. game or dion's or i mean game or pick and pay or something and she's like oh okay why i'm like because they're 60 fucking right <laughs> oh, no i want to know am i wrong am i being like like terribly thrifty like what? well i've got to almost hijack your hijack and just say like look at me third world country boy living in australia now like i mean six dollars for a box of candied treats uh would be a deal <laughs> let me just tell you be probably yeah, closer to 10 yeah 10 for bucks. sure but i mean like 60 bucks i mean that's 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 like a i don't even know that's like a proper it's meal. A McDonald's you can have meal. meal for that yeah, yeah exactly. right for a little box of like candy treats no for sure do you know i i gotta say you made the right decision yeah. shot because like Okay, to be fair, she didn't get upset or angry or anything with me. I just feel bad, like, upon self-reflection here. I was just like, shit, maybe I was a bit, like, too quick on the trigger with that one. Because I even said to her, I'm like, listen, we'll go buy you, like, three boxes of Astros from, like, wherever. But <laughs> <laughs> then at least we can take two home. You know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. God. I mean, never mind the fact that we had made, like, a small little swing past the Krispy Kreme to go and get a set of the Ghostbusters donuts to really make a meal out of this this event that was watching <laughs> Ghostbusters. Uh, you know, <laughs> of course. The whole hog. How could you not enjoy the film? I mean, like... Right? You, you're when just all hype, bro. Yeah. Right? Exactly. I just <laughs> wish that we got that cool Slimer, um, bo uh, you know, like, the, the cup. Like all the other like regions got like these really cool cups for the cinema for for Ghostbusters like this Slimer. Oh one no way! So we didn't. Yeah. Oh, it really God. annoys me that we don't get shit like that. Anyway, enough of that. I hijacked that. And if anybody's keen, just before we move on to Steve's very cool story about Doctor Who, uh, and I don't <laughs> want to labor this on too hard, but this was my favorite toy of 2021 that was non-Joe related that I bought. Hey. It was, was of cool? course. Hot Rod, <laughs> Transformers Studio, Hot Rod. Um, nice. This has been such a great, great toy. Um, there's been no other Transformers that a uh, Transformer figure that I've bought that's quite trumped this. Um, this has been the highlight. Um, and I've got to say, Waspinator came close, but this is too cool. I really feel uh, feel like I got bang for my buck when I got this guy. I finally got what I feel is a definitive Hot Rod without having to buy a masterpiece, and that makes me very happy. 
And just so you guys know, he did go up against the Super 7 Ultimate Ninja Turtles, of which I mm -hmm. managed to get a Metalhead this year, and Rocksteady, as well as April, and he beat them out. So, yeah, that's saying something about this little toy. And I suppose it doesn't hurt the fact that I bought this in a Toys R Us physically. I went in, saw it, had that reaction, mulled over it for about a week and a half, and went back and bought one, and was very pleased with my purchase. So if anybody cares about what my best toy of this year was well looks like Stephen and i are in the same camp transformers was our best non-joe uh, non toy this year that we bought for ourselves <laughs> anyway mm. and tiger force outback is probably our best joe toy um the the, the runner-up for me would have been version 1.5 snake eyes man what a mystique i immediately shot a review about that guy check it out if you haven't already but man beautiful That's toy now. Got him from a douchebag of a seller. Oof. Boy, what a Oof. what a what an absolute debacle. The guy, it was a it was a low starting bid, um, and I decided to roll the dice. It was an uncontested bid, so clearly the writing wasn't on the, on the wall. This guy was dodgy. When it eventually arrived, yeah, it was fucked. It had a back screw that had been that the head had been drilled off, um, so it wasn't going anywhere. It had been overturned, so he had a third nipple in the center of his chest. Um, he was a mess. So I sent this back with my deep annoyance. Um, and a week later, he was selling another one. And these things <laughs> never come up, eBay Australia. So I, I rolled the dice for a second time. And I thought, I, I, I must be a sucker for punishment. But this one turned out to be A-OK. -okay. However... Um, I've been following this story very closely, and if you have been a, a regular listener of G.I. Joe books, so have you. The guy tried to pedal the busted one on eBay and succeeded. In fact, he succeeded so well that he schneid the winning bidder, um, who then, well, he, he, he must have sold it to the losing bidder uh, for a price that, um, that he just could not refuse. But he got burned because he got some negative feedback for that stunt. <laughs> Revolting seller. I won the auction fair and square and another buyer makes him an offer outside of eBay. So he cancels my purchase and sells it elsewhere. No discussion, nothing. All buyers beware. Don't even waste your time on this person's listing. You probably won't even receive the item if you win. <sighs> Justice is served, my friends. And I didn't have to do it. Because <laughs> as the you recall, I was teetering harmony. on the brink, the brink of like, like giving him negative feedback because he had got a hundred percent feedback score to that point and i'm like how is this possible <laughs> this guy's a dud big time he's a absolute douchebag they must feel they must feel quite vindicating in a lot of ways like uh, you didn't it's... have to do anything and you were mulling it over and actually you were definitely not in the wrong i know that at one point you thought maybe maybe you had done done, done the wrong thing but you hadn't so yes nice <laughs> Well, I Good. mean, Results. you know, if, if you're going to, it's obviously, it's a behavior on this guy's part that, that, that he, that it's, oh, he it's just wants to he con people. Lot. Totally. It's something he does a lot and he had, he got what's coming to him, hopefully, you know, I mean, if you're going to act like that, you just, you should expect consequences. Unfortunately, just be a decent person, you know? Yeah. Be, a, be a nice asshole, asshole, not an asshole, asshole. Exactly. So while 2021 <laughs> gave me uh, some cool toys, of course, reams and reams of toys. I mean, like I got my first scoop this year. Like I was going back through the annals of time. Like I got my first um, 1988 Storm Shadow this year. I got my first complete Desert Scorpion. Like there's some great toys that I found their way into my possession this year. Um, I did also find myself a son. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. Coolest toy of all, guys. He's my playmate. He's my guy. He's rad. Um, He's and rad. let me also take a moment to uh, just celebrate the fact that Rob re-entered my life in 2021 after a, oh. a year-long um, MIA. And yeah, no, I mean, it timed very sweetly. Like, listeners of the podcast, uh, long-time listeners, if you go back in and check the tapes, I mean, it was last year that it happened. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it almost marked a year to the day that uh, Rob was absent. So thank you, Rob. 2021 Welcome. gave me my I'm friend. I'm glad back. I helped. Yeah, we got I Robbie back. 2021 better for you. We've got another scoop. Anyways, 
<laughs> hey. <laughs> Enough of the schmaltzy stuff. Um, watching Wee-wee. Doctor Who says season eleven, um, episode number two. Uh, they're walking. They, they crash land on this hostile planet. No, it's not a hostile planet, my friends. These dunes. The second they showed the dunes that are flashing on the screen now, I was like, <laughs> I know that location. I spent a couple of days on that location. Uh, hey. That is the location we shot Blazing Sand, the, the uh, initial episode. A much and better story than this this episode. Yeah, you didn't dig it. Who. I'm sorry well, to Robert, say. Have you watched on? Have you watched the cameos by like local South African actors? Friends I did of mine? see some of them. Yeah, for sure, yeah. did. And there are there is an episode filmed in Cape Town. I mean, they filmed it at yes. the um that little uh, company hotel gardens. bar place. Yeah, company oh. gardens, and at that little hotel just on off Ruland Street in Cape Town. Couldn't believe my eyes when yeah, the Kimberley Hotel, I think it was. Um, yes. I couldn't believe my eyes when old Richard Lothian is playing a racist. <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes he's just had a baby actually anyways enough small hey talk. congrats um, to him but just like, in case you didn't recognize this piece. as being the dunes of atlantis out in the the northern suburbs of of, of cape town they flip the camera around in the very next uh, shot and what's in the background hiding in plain sight table mountain the they mountain bother what? to they frame it bother. out table or is they like to <laughs> Or as I like to say it in Cape Town, the mountain. <laughs> this yeah, is natural wonder of the world, I'll have you know. Yeah. Since that exactly. uh, you see? You see, listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cape Town committed, except living don't in Australia. Get don't wrong get between me. a Cape Townian and his mountain. <laughs> across. <laughs> oh, dude, I love it. I love that you love Cape Town like that. It's good. I think I've cleared the slate for the <laughs> the introductory rounds gents oh book of boba fett god how is it that the show like does not understand the appeal of the character at all that's all I i'll say about that yet i it, I, it, it is yes. exactly what i expected to be i mean we already knew which direction things were going based on the way mandalorian ended but like and while we're on the topic and I know I'm going to be accused of body shaming at this point, but hear me out. I have a point. Boba Fett is a character such that his silhouette, when he's armored up, is far more important than what his face looks like. Let that sink in. If you've got an actor who's thick set, he will not look like Boba Fett. Like, I almost don't care what's under the mask. I want him to cut that same figure that is recognizable as Boba Fett. Anyways, this is sounding like a personal attack. It's just something that occurred to me that, like, this is way off anyone's real conception of what the Boba Fett character is. It's mm. it's in a lesser degree kind of like Mark Hamill's take on the character he played in The Last Jedi. He's like, this isn't Luke. <laughs> this is somebody else. Anyway. Yeah, I kind of feel you on that one. I feel you on that one. So like, I will watch with morbid curiosity, but I, I knew from the off that we weren't going to get a ruthless, calculating, fearsome bounty hunter. We're going to get a, what, a crime boss just sauntering through the streets of Mos Espa and having very, very lazy fight choreography with some night creeper looking dudes before they tear off and do some parkour yes guys parkour in star wars is <laughs> jarring man it takes me out in fact when i see parkour, i don't mind anywhere... if jedi do it mm, uh, no Look, i'm i'm, I'm I, cool with it with jedi do it i mind i mind when flint does it i mind anytime i see parkour because it's not practical it's just cool it looks cool it, it's a cool acrobatic expressive way of traversing open spaces but i think it's 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 very self-aware it's very like look at me we're doing cool tricks uh yeah it's not a way of getting from a to b it's more a a way of overcoming obstacles i think in general at least from Mm -hmm. what i've seen in parkour it's like you see a wall you want to figure out how to get to the top there or you want to get down from a rooftop or you want to go through something um it's it's not about 
a continuous travel essentially you know you, you don't incorporate it into how are you getting to some place it's not like assassin's creed you know where Look, like you can literally edge, traverse can. or mirror's edge yeah, or yeah. batman uh, arkham asylum or something like that arkham city where you know batman's trying to get across a city and he's doing it by climbing buildings shooting across things and flying yeah, no, I, I, get, I get your point, Stephen. It's more of a, it's a short offy thing rather than a way of actually getting somewhere. If nothing else, it just breaks me out. Mm. It breaks me out of the suspension of disbelief that this is a galaxy far, far away and a long time ago. You know, like it's just, it's too current Earth 2021, what is hot, what is happening, what is cool. 2022, yeah. Um, yeah. So yes, the, the, uh, I will watch on with morbid curiosity, but my heart's not in this show. Um, yeah, man, sorry. They, they really, really need to acquaint themselves with what made Boba Fett cool because it's not evident in any of this. We haven't even seen the Slave 1 yet. They can't even call it that. And there's the most bloodless fight you, you're ever likely to see in a Star Wars movie or show with this, like, brutal looking beast but it's like okay wh wh when's it gonna chop chomp someone's head off when, when we're gonna see some gore nope <laughs> disney's calling the shots now guys have fun with that um on the on the topic of cool shit to watch this year <laughs> um i caught cobra kai the, the, oh, the, latest yeah. season. Oh, the new season absolutely loved it really like what they try to do with the show um, did the teenage mutant ninja Turtles show up no no, but hey, oh, here's hoping. No. Here's hoping. They had those crossover action figures. They're still selling them. I could pick you up some, Paul. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm on the fence about those. I'm like, I, I really dig the concept, but I'm like, I'm not sure. Like, as far as karate guys go, I only want Johnny Lawrence because I dig Johnny. He's cool, um, which is so weird to say. <laughs> um, but I don't, I don't know. I'm like, I'm scared because that, that's also that's a slippery slope because I'd have to get all four sets you know, if I have all the turtles. <laughs> um, but uh, i got to say, dude, the show is, is, is great. I liked it. Listen, there are a few things that they've done that might maybe annoy people who maybe feel a little bit, or a bit sensitive. I don't want to say to woke culture. But the, the thing that I do like about this season is that they have definitely considered inc uh, inclusivity a little bit more, but in a clever way, in a way that I feel is not in your face, very uh, and very smart. Like the way they've they've actually dealt with that is very good. Um, but that, that I'm just those are just like whatever. Now that I can get past the sort of disclaimers, really great show. Great to see the the bad guys being bad guys. Um, cool to see our heroes struggling and and dealing with their own issues. Um, in a more mature way, because these characters are growing, which is great to see. Uh, anyway, go and check it out. I'm sure most people who are listening to this podcast already have, because it's Cobra freaking Kai, <laughs> and it's awesome, and uh, probably one of the more enjoyable things I've watched recently. Also, watch something. I don't know if you guys would be keen on this. It's called Arcane. Uh, I'm not a fan at all of League of Legends, although I do love the character design, um, but Arcane is a sort of a CG, well, I, I'm just going to call it an animated show that's uh, based off the League of Legends lore. And the League of Legends has actually got some really deep lore to it. And it makes for a great TV show. And I'm very nervous about TV watching show. this show because <laughs> I've seen the action figures and they're 1 to 18 scale. And if Ooh. I see this show, I might want to buy them. Yeah, you might because there's some, there's some cool shit in that, in that show. Yeah. And it's pretty yeah. as hell. Um, yeah, Bot, Bot uh, doesn't dig it, didn't enjoy it. He's like, Arcane oh, was crap. Got halfway through and turned it off. I get that. Yeah, um, Bot doesn't like the Tom Shirley Transformers versus G.I. Joe, so what does he know? <laughs> <laughs> but Suck in all it, fairness, Bot. Chair Force. Uh, like, it took me a while to get, uh, to get to a point. Where, uh, like, I thought it was good, and then it gets to a point where it's like, wow, this is actually really great. Well, and then I enjoyed it. I don't think it's the best thing I've watched ever, but it's definitely one of the highlights of last year um, because it came out last year and I was holding off watching it for a while. So I eventually did. Also got Celia hooked on Orange is the New Black. So she's been <laughs> binging no, 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 we're not going down this again. Paul, this is the third podcast on which you've mentioned that show. Come on. It's a good show. It's he wants everyone show. to watch it with him. Let's get I've back watched to the whole thing. Back I'd, to it's... toys. 
<laughs> no, we, we just started watching Breaking Bad. That's a rabbit hole as well. But um, have your wish lists, your top five items uh, shifted at all? I mean, I've knocked three of my top five off, so I've got three slots opened up. Uh, I yeah, can't I... quite think of what I want. Maybe a Tiger Force Tiger Paw? Because it was the first G.I. Joe vehicle I ever got. And it and looks great with Outback. You know it. You got a full... Yeah. Now that he doesn't have a dick, like, I have no problems with, like, like splaying his legs Not out. The on, like, a... <laughs> exactly, Paul. You, you're you trapped. You're trapped in the web. I can only put him in the... In... I can only put him in the tiger sting or the tiger fly or the tiger rat and or never the tiger like, shark. pose him too aggressively because you know that crotch is going to track work. Track track record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know Rob, that crotch has got, got a dodgy track 20, record. 2022 wish list items. I think mine's still. I mean, I didn't get any. I don't think I've got any of them from 2021. You so I think it's got it's... ice cream soldier. He's just with me. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Well, maybe Still I'll, for that I'll, script, I'll put, by the way. I'll, oh, I'll get there. You know, I was gonna say next year, but um, I can't say that anymore. We're here so now. It's actually 2022. <laughs> soon, you could soon. say I'm, next year. I've... You'd just be giving yourself 365 <laughs> days lead time. I don't know if I can nah, wait that long. No, no, no. I've, I've, I've finally come up with a. I, yeah, we brainstormed a bit a while ago. Um me and, and some of the, the Joe Burgers and I, I have the concept and it's just brewing in my head and I just want it to come to a boil and then I'll I'll, I'll pump it out. I'm not the best nice. when it comes to writing pump stuff it out. down. So. Pump it out. But you uh, write I'll, so I'll well, Rob. So if, I, I, I hope that motivates you because your, your it's, writing it's, is good. It's, it's coming. It's coming, I promise. Does it's, it make it easier on. if I say I enjoy your writing? Oh. <laughs> yeah. that, that's so fantastic. no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> Oh my goodness! There's so much pressure. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. But I think yeah, I think it stays pretty strong. I mean, yeah, you know, as we're wrapping up, um, I think all the things I wanted last year are still things I want this year. It's, it's we're only two days into the new year as we're recording this. My my tastes have not changed that dramatically yet. Well, you wanted a a, a Scarlet V1.5, but it does occur to me that by owning the straight arm Scarlet. You've got a GI Joe in your possession that is turning forty this year. Hey, ah, Paul, do you own good, any Joes? Do you own any Joes that are turning forty this year? I do. I have a Steeler, actually. Oh, straight on. I have straight a straight on, on Steeler. Yeah. Wow. What? Is it? When, when no, the hell wait. did you get that? I got that as part when Greg um, sent me the Terradrome. That was in a mess of figures there. Yeah. So. I just want to make sure it's a Steeler. I keep pulling it Steeler. Maybe it's just because I like Pittsburgh so much because of a certain <laughs> Pittsburghian Berg <laughs> Force member. But um, I do want to it check. might be one it... of the other guys that looks just like him. Yeah. Yeah. You well, sure. I've got straight arm breaker. So that's that's cool. Maybe we should rejig our avatars to be our, our 40 year old selves. For this year. Oh, God. But mine <laughs> looks like Odo. That, that's very appropriate. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> You know, <laughs> mine, mine uh, looks like a bearded Odo. So, what you gonna do? Oh man, mine's the best looking. <laughs> yeah, keep telling yourself yours is a red-headed <laughs> Odo. <laughs> <laughs> extra, extra melty. Oh man. Now, eighty-two, like, yeah, it's scary oh. to think. Actually, wow, that's a whole podcast uh, in and of itself. Is the fortieth mm. anniversary of GI Joe? Okay, like, it's coming. Stay tuned. Yeah, I'm excited <laughs> Episode about that. 400. Guys, we'll, we'll get I there. have a quick question. Um, but mainly, mainly, mainly pointed at Paul. But when uh -oh. you're blowing out candles on a birthday cake, it was Kim's birthday recently. Happy birthday, Kim. Um, hey, do you do you exclaim after the candles have been blown out if any of them stay lit? Oh, five girlfriends. Three girlfriends, whatever. However many numbers, however many candles are still burning, is the number of girlfriends or boyfriends that you teased about having. Hey, yeah, this is no, just a Cape Town yeah, thing. That's the thing. Maybe oh, it's a Cape Town thing. Never experienced that ever. What? I have yeah. all the time. I mean, that's not even just at Stephen. I mean, if I went to other birthday parties, you know. Ooh, For me, it's always like, oh, Paul, why did you spit on the cake? It's like, oh, mine, <laughs> mine. Oh. 
Well, this <laughs> no, I'm is, joking. This is news Never to me. That. It didn't even travel as far as Johannesburg. Hey, Rob, yeah. does that just yeah, blow your mind? It's a Kryptonian thing. It is. It's crazy, actually, you know how disconnected the two places are. Yeah. Uh, it was news to me when I was like teasing Kim about it, like, oh, no boyfriends. And she was like, what? Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> Come again? Okay. Did you well, guys have it in Singapore? Oh. Now you've made it a thing. Like it's a thing. It is a thing. It's a South African. It's a Cape Tonianism. And something else that I was reminded of recently. Hey Rob, we suffered through that shit show called Dreamcatcher. Why? Uh, hey, yeah. Why? Because at the start of it, it had uh, the final flights of the Osiris. I think it was called that that short that was put onto the Animatrix. So yes. Matri oh, yes. Matrix yeah. fever was hardcore. In 2003, it was everywhere. Like, we were going to see shitty Steven Spielberg. Not Steven Spielberg. Um, Stephen what's the King. Name of Stephen King. Stephen Thank King. You. Yeah, the Stephen. Yeah. Um, good book, just, though. Just to watch a short that had a link to the Matrix. Anyways, gents. Hey, no. Shall, we, shall we play Where's This Game? Joe Hunter 7-3. This one's for you, baby. He sent us a suggestion via the post box of the pit, and I'm all about this. It's basically just a little check in with um, the following categories Joe Cobra, you hate. Joe Cobra, that's most overrated. Joe Cobra, that's most underappreciated. Joe Cobra, that was your first. Joe Cobra, that is your favorite. Joe Cobra, you can play with over and over. Joe Cobra, that surprised you. Joe or Cobra, that is your guilty pleasure and favorite vehicle aircraft playset. The, the rule to this list game is that once someone has selected something, that's effectively removed from the table. You can't double up. So you can easily have the rug pulled out from under you if you were to double up. Yeah. Or if, yeah, if like one of us kind of like ready chooses someone, it kind of takes off the table for someone else. But the toy line is big enough and broad enough, so I don't know if there are going to be too many clashes. Like it maybe depends. if we played, maybe we maybe if we played this for a specific year. But um, maybe we can do that at a later stage. As a general round, let's let's do this, and you, the listener, can play too. So think about it. What is the Joe or Cobra you hate? And this is interesting. Like, is there something in this toy line that makes your blood boil? And by toy line, let's extend this a little bit. Let's extend this to the IP in general. So even stuff that hasn't necessarily received a toy, if it's a concept or a character from the cartoons or comic books or video games, whatever, books, let's, let's have it. Like, do you guys have anything that you actually hate? <laughs> Joe Hunter, uh, thank you, my brother. He responds immediately with Raptor. Raptor. <laughs> what did Raptor do to you other than your taxes? <laughs> <laughs> Paul, what do you what do you hate, Paulie? Oof. In G I in Cobra. In oh G man. Cobra or G I G I or Cobra. Jeez. I mean what is your listen, most, most hate? Um you can say nothing, I guess. You could you could definitely yeah, do but you, like, you can but that's not true. Like in fer in terms I mean there is one specific G. I. Joe figure that really gets my ire. I like Ooh. and that is um, tell me more i cannot stand and i even struggle to remember his damn name that's how much i hate him is the <laughs> the driver of the mean dog um keep on wild uh, card wild card i cannot stand i think it's just his helmet i don't know just, what did he I do to you it. come around to your place and break all your stuff no <laughs> but i just yeah like i don't dig that and also by extension the um battle copter version of him like, which is basically major him. Major altitude. Major altitude. Like, they both suck. In my, I hate them both. Like, like, I, like, I, I can actually go as far as that. I just, I hate those figures. And then worse than also, armadillo or yeah, windmill? armadillo was actually the skidmark? next one I was about to say. No, skidmark. I'm actually cool with skidmark. I got no issues with skidmark. I can't stand armadillo either. The only thing, I, I, I would still say that I hold armadillo, armadillo in a higher regard than um. God, I can't even remember his name. See, I just I have such a mental block <laughs> on this character, I cannot stand this character. But yeah, wild Major card. Altitude and Wildcard. I'm no, no, thank you. Really dislike those figures. Um Heck they just 
I just think they have such boring sculpts and they just, bleh. but I'm glad that I've got them actually, because at least I don't have to go hunt out the hunt them down, you know, like I've got them. Because but you that would, do take yeah. your foot off the gas a little bit, Paul. Like you said, you dislike them. I want to, I want to get to the crux of something you actually hate. Oh no, no, I hate those. <laughs> Sorry, dude, I'm oh. just being nice. I, I hate those figures. Yeah. No, I own them, those. but I really hate them. No, I hate them, dude. Like to the point where, like I said, I'm just glad that I don't have to buy them. Like I'm so <laughs> glad that I don't have to like one day try to find them on eBay or buy them from like a seller or something. I'm like, I've got them because that's money that would hurt me to spend. Like I'd be like, and hey, uh, if you got more than one tomahawk, you need another pilot. So altitudes, you man, and I yeah, a wild card can disappear <laughs> into the cavity into of the, the mean, mean dog. dog and never yeah. be seen again. And also, guys, just to come back to my eighty-two figure, it's Flash. I keep getting him confused oh. with Steeler. I've ah, got Flash. There we go. Good figure, but unfortunately, having no swivel arm, like with a with a character that needs to hold a weapon. Oh man, the swivel arm is absolutely essential. Mm, mm. I mean, the Flash's gun feels like a two-handed weapon to me. No, be. totally, totally. Um, Scarlet's crossbow, less so. <laughs> uh, Breaker, guys... bre bre Breaker's my swivel arm. And he looks just fine, sitting in the 83 HQ, doing very little. <laughs> and uh, out of interest, which um, which ones do you guys hate, if any? Well, I absolutely hate something, only one thing, and it's not even... Well, strictly speaking, it does have an action figure, so it is in consideration, but... If you don't know Larry Harmer's IDW run, this is going to pl sail plainly over your heads. But anytime the Blue Ninjas entered the storyline, I checked out. I I not only dislike it, I hate it as a concept. Like mm. seething red hate forced me to like rage quit Talking Joe. I just I couldn't read another comic book that <laughs> involved those things. Wow. Hmm. Oh, speaking of Talking Joe, link in the description below, but I joined the host, Mark, uh, on a wonderful chat about the silent interlude stop motion. If you're scratching your heads, check out the links below. Wonderful stop motion that was created and a making of and a commentary. Um, and we had the creator on the show to talk about his process. And man, it was an eye opener. This guy did some incredible work bringing the issue to life so good anyways i hate the blue ninjas big time <laughs> rob well something i probably i don't think i've ever mentioned before but i mean i've i've seen them on file cards i think back in the day and it, it was definitely not a toy that i would buy um but kind of going again through through yojo and i was like ah oh, that guy i just it it just it, he does not embody what I imagine when I see this character in my head. And I think this version of him, which they did twice with different colors, but this is definitely the most atrocious version, version is Air Commander Spirit, which is version oh, three of, of Sacrilege. Of what? Really? He is absolutely horrendous. His oh, colors wow. are way too bright. He doesn't feel like Spirit in any degree whatsoever. He's covered in like a hundred grenades. He has, mm -hmm. he's wearing jeans. He's wearing awful red gloves with a green top and, and like, ugh, Oh, it's, those it's gloves are so awesome, gross. dude. It's so those gross. gloves, those gloves remind me of, uh, Axel from Streets of Rage. Mm -hmm. It's the same well, color red. Well, so he good. definitely makes me rage whenever I think about it. <laughs> I think he, he maybe looks a bit better in his recolored version because the one I really don't like is version 3 from 92. Mm -hmm. But version 4 yeah, came in 93. Those. Yes, so 93 is, I think, just the, you know, the, the carded version of him or something. I don't know. But, like, it just it doesn't feel like... Oh, no, 93 would have been the international, the international set. Yeah, I, I see it's in like a bag or something. But like, so obviously the commercially available version was was the the shitty version, at least the version that I just can't stand whatsoever. Um, oh, but, but if, if God, I had he's to, in the video game, he's just this awful. It's most awful. He can be in the video game, but I'm not going to play him. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not you playable. To, I mean, if, if, if I had to, if I had to choose one that I mean that I mean 
that I think is, is probably more well known is that um the fuck is that stupid ninja thing called the <laughs> oh, horrendous the vehicle? Battle axe. <laughs> yes. Okay. Battle axe. I think you guys can all everyone can get get behind me on that one. Battle X is just the worst. It's not even a vehicle. I what? spoke on your behalf in a How? Facebook thread that asked like someone what liked is, it. Come what on. It, no, what is the vehicle that like literally people would have to pay you? To put it in your hands. <laughs> You're like, no, I don't want to touch that. Post no, no, for sure. You have to Rob pay me a lot here. of money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's going to happen, dude. Think, it's going to happen. Someone's going to gift you a ninja battle axe. <laughs> I get, I'm, I'm, I'm going to switch my answer. Okay. Uh, if he's in the video game, that's fine. But the battle axe is definitely that there's actually my top number one. <laughs> I think I forgot about it. I'd, I'd gotten out of my mind. But now that I'm getting all ironed up. Mm. Oh my god. All right. Yeah, that is the worst thing ever. Okay, I changed it. Nin- Ninja Battle X. Awful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That spirit is lovely. I mean, if you are keeping the 90s company, you know, he fits in well with all those sub teams. Like the, 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 the paintwork on his headband, stunning. And he's got like a rubber secondary headpiece with a very tasteful little ponytail. He's uh, clearly trimmed off the the locks a little bit but he's still well, rocking he wants to not- be more combat ready oh, I, I, I guess i will it's... i can probably come around him i mean I, now that i you know that i think about it it's cool it's bad. very 90s it's very I much think the, the recolored version of him is way better though it's more toned down um it's I, no fun I, man I, I don't think i'd be able to buy this one i might be able to buy the other one Dude, he flies a glider that is literally the American flag wrapped around an airframe. So he's got to be screaming, like, look at me, America. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Guys, the, the channel, um, the, the comments uh, thread has lit up. Eh? I mean, we got guys. <laughs> I mean, we Venting their started hate. For, I mean, Raptor is getting some shade uh, from Joe Hunter. <laughs> uh, we've got... Um, where is it now? Uh, I think it's flat. Uh, oh no, no, Dr. that was Dr. Ryan Mindbender. Uh, Captain Gridiron. Gaz hates Captain Gridiron clearly. And if you don't believe me, um, there were two responses to that. But he was in the video game at Gaz, and then Sammy's like fluorescent weapons, and then Gaz's like, sure, but I just hate it. <laughs> and Sammy Six Toes hates fluorescent weapons. Um, so uh, that's his thing that he hates in GI Joe. Um, Ryan feels that the football thing should have stopped with after the fridge. I'm just going to like remain quiet here. Like, I like grid iron. Um, but if you look at <laughs> Africa... the record, he he didn't have fluorescent rep weapons, so don't no, don't he... let's mislead anyone listening after the fact. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. His weapons were intricate, man, and too numerous. Gee but I, I mean, I don't want to change anybody's opinion on him. Um, I mean, if you don't like him, you don't like him. And that's cool. Um, I just want to say, like, with Captain Gridiron in South Africa, you had two options. You had the original, which came with these cool gun with the uh, with the football bomb grenade, take them or leave them, whatever that came with that. And then they did like a, a the second one, which was just like a missile firing thing. It was like stupid. So it took the actual cool thing from the figure away from the figure. And that's actually why it's so easy in South Africa to find Captain Gridiron without his gear. Because nobody actually had his gear. You know, because they had that stupid missile launching crap. So that did sour me on Captain Gridiron. Uh, and that's why I never bought him when I was a kid. Because I missed out on getting the cool one. Then when he came back, I was like, eh, I don't want the rocket launcher one. I want the football bombs version. So, yeah, I hate that. But I don't hate Captain Gridiron. But if you hate Oof. Captain Gridiron, that's cool. <laughs> I've been dwelling on hate for a little longer than I'd Let's like. Get some love up in here. No, no. The next topic is actually which is the most overrated Joel Cobra. Oh, so it's a Shut step down back from love. hate, but like, <laughs> but certainly like acknowledging what in the fan base is seemingly untouchable and touching it. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna crack this one open with some serious bloody. Um, unpopular opinions, but I think that the whale, the killer whale, hugely overrated. Like wow. that is routinely people's top one or two, and I think you should make it's, a whale. it's good. It's substantial, 
but it's a hovercraft and I've never been on side with just like it's function like it's such a narrow function and unfortunately it being so early in the line and and never being surpassed meant that G.I. Joe's Navy like remained at zero you had a whale you had a devilfish you had a flag they never got a boat like a substantial boat boat mm. so the whale kind of stood in the way of G.I. Joe actually having something to take on the moray on the open seas because like I know I'm applying like adult sensibilities to it now but um I, I don't know the whale it's amazing but it stays on the shelf in my play times Ooh, I've got I've got two things I, I okay firstly I agree with what you're saying uh because I think the whale you is don't a have cool a whale boo I don't have a whale <laughs> yeah but I mean like when I first uh, had a, when I had a real blushing with the whale, that was when you got one. I thought it was uh, you got one, Steve. I thought it was a great toy, and I still think it's a great toy. And I understand why guys are excited about uh, Haslab possibly re, uh, remaking one or, or making one because it's a cool toy. And I think a lot of guys actually inherently just want to have a whale where they fixed up the problems with the the fins, you know, the the veins on the props, and uh, and maybe you know add a few bells and whistles here and there. You know, and but I agree with where you're coming from, but I also see why guys dig it so much. I don't know. I won't say it's like that overrated. I just think a lot of us are sort of paused on this desire to have a whale that meets its full potential. I don't think the whales ever really met its full potential because of how fragile some of the parts are. Um, however, my overrated, the things that I think are like supremely overrated in G.I. Joe, at least in the toy line, um, and it's a small handful, sorry, but the flag is one of them in a big way for me. I think it's a great feat in in that, yeah, it's the, one of the biggest toys, if not the biggest toy ever produced, and that's cool. When you break it down to its simplest, most basic components, it's basically a plastic shelf, um, which is not that thrilling. When you are in the presence, or should I say when you're in the company of one, it's a lot of fun. I get it. But when I see a whole bunch of guys are clamoring for a HasLab flag, I'm just like, okay. I think it's the same thing as the whale. I think people just want a flag that doesn't fall apart, personally. And maybe hoping that Hasbro <laughs> actually puts a whole bunch of stuff in there as opposed to it just being a plastic display shelf. Um, so I think the flag is terribly overrated. Um, I do love this character, but I also think he's terribly overrated. Snake Eyes. I really think that uh, as much as G.I. Joe benefits from having a hero character, a sort of a... Uh, a tip of the arrow character for for people to recognize the brand. I think Snake Eyes sadly hurts the brand a lot more now than it, than he actually helps the brand. I think he takes a lot of power away from GI Joe's uh, from the characters uh, from the other characters in in GI Joe. We've got this. Yeah, Snake Eyes is just like a MacGuffin. He like fixes everything. I mean, he is cool. Don't get me wrong. I just feel like he's been pushed to the front too hard, and. Ultimately, not the best thing in G.I. Joe. There are so many great things in G.I. Joe for so many different people. I mean, we've got Rob who absolutely loves Scoop, you know, and that kind of character appreciation, I feel, is set aside because of characters like, like Snake Eyes. And those would be the two major things in G.I. Joe that I think are overrated. In my Incredible. <laughs> Sorry. I just went off. <laughs> <laughs> that leaves you, Oh, wow. Well. Uh, so I think probably, I mean, it was so easy to say Snake Eyes, I think, but I think Duke <laughs> is pretty overrated. Oh. Yeah, he's off the table now. I mean, I think because of the fact that Snake Eyes can't talk, Duke kind of moves forward, especially in adaptations. So like the cartoon, he became, you know, the hero character for most of the cartoon for the live action movies, um, you know, that they have ding, attempted ding, ding. Channing Tatum. He became, you know, action man. My Duke. name's Jeff. <laughs> <What>? so <laughs> and then also then in more recent toy lines as well i mean they often lead with duke and they keep making more and more versions of duke um well you could you know you could put a lot more characters in there i mean gi joe is cool because it's a team it's not about one character necessarily whether it be snake eyes or duke um yeah. there's so many other characters you could be producing or bring to the forefront or just make it a team effort you know make it a team focused thing you don't have to have one character that the audience needs to relate to, to kind of like get into the story. You know, mm. it's a team. 
show us how cool all of these characters are. So I think a lot of the time, by them going and focusing specifically on Duke and trying to flesh him more out, um, it does a disservice to the rest of the characters in, in the roster. And I think also why maybe they keep choosing him is because he's also kind of like a blank slate. Mm. You know, he is he's kind of, cipher. he's the vanilla guy. He's the fighter guy. Yeah. You know, there's not much more to him, um, which is why I suppose, you know, especially in the first G.I. Joe movie, they try to add more there, more like, kind of like, like, um, or is it like he had some sort of partial relationship with the Baroness and stuff? And it's oh, like they're trying to add intrigue in there to a character that has no necessarily things that makes him stand out. I mean, yeah. you know, he's a cool guy. I think it's pretty awesome. But he doesn't stand out for me as being the person that needs to be the forefront, the face of G.I. Joe. Yeah, I agree with you there too, Rob. I, I, I always feel like, you know, if you look at uh, Duke's file card and you look at how Larry Hammer treated him, I think duke would have been so much better in the show if he's like the dad okay in the in the in the team in the sense not like dad like major dad whatever but i'm talking about <laughs> like when the joes do stuff they actually should be scared of pissing duke off not be, yeah you know you know what i mean like he should be that authoritative kind of presence that's there not you know the sort of poster boy in that respect okay actually it's a bit of a funny one because in the 80s i think he's a great poster boy for gi joe actually in our now times i don't i think yeah, um, so i think much. duke needs to kind of have that sort of yeah he's seen shit, you know and he should be a little bit more grizzled and a little bit more angry in a sense and i think the rest of the characters should be like whoa duke is like pretty badass you know and we deal with him every now and then kind of and I'm sorry to make this re um, this connection here, so I, but it's the only one I can think of. If you guys have watched the Titans series, which, by the way, is not that great, but the whole way they, they treat Batman in that series is kind of how I feel they should treat Duke. You know, he's the badass, he, uh, but he's got his failings, but he's not the main character of the show, you know, and, but he's in the show. Sorry, anyway, sorry. Um, mm, so if your protagonist isn't Snake Eyes and isn't Duke... Who does the camera settle on? I think no one specific. You just, just steel go, brigade. Go with the team. I suppose steel. No, just no, anyone. Not necessarily. It's a team like, effort. It's it's a, it's yeah. it's all the characters. I mean, they are team TV shows. I mean, I meant I managed yeah, I because I was staying at my mother over the weekend to watch um, Spider Man. I managed to catch an episode of it uh, of a modern remake, I suppose, of SWAT. And there isn't necessarily a main character there. I mean, the one episode I watched. Oh, it's like Star Trek. You know, there is a captain of a ship, Picard, but the show shows you all the characters and it gives them yes. all a chance to kind of shine. Um, exactly. It's more That's like that. Thing. My protagonist is 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 the team itself or the, the concept, the place that they inhabit. I love um, that. Yeah, because I yeah. agree with you on that. I like um, some of the comments here. Sorry, I just want to just highlight some of these because they really are like fantastic. Um, Ryan just wanted to jump in with Snake Eyes is overrated because of the modern era with the 700 figures and now with the O-ring and Classified. We get it that he is a benchmark, but good lord, 900 Snake Eyes figures. Ryan, that's a point I didn't make earlier, but yes, thank you. It's difficult to get excited about G.I. Joe stuff when they keep fl uh, slinging Snake Eyes at us at every, you know, hook and turn. Um, hey man, but... It's for the kids. No, I get it. be a but... new Snake Eyes to buy. Come on. Ugh. He's I evergreen. Mean, they could have just well, he's, yeah, but he's then like keep him evergreen. Of but then keep him evergreen because like that's a mistake Mattel made with uh, with um, He Man. Sorry guys, but in the eighties, a big <laughs> problem is they kept re releasing new new characters all the time, and people just wanted basic He Man and Skeletor, and it became and that's what helped people distance from the line, distance from the toy line. That's what they reckon. That's one of the reasons the toy sales dropped. So you know what? Yes, give us Snake Eyes, make him evergreen, but don't always freaking redesign him every two seconds it's it's annoying um especially and steve this is a point you brought up long ago with me it's like when you have all of these figures which is the one that you is your go-to which is your ultimate version of this figure and that's part of that that was part of the genesis of this podcast as well is discussing those kind of things and with snake eyes it's like how do you choose which is the absolute best favorite snake eyes figure you've got there so that's why i kind of am a little bit annoyed with that character at the moment Bart is says, it the first Snake Eyes? No, then shuffle it to the back of the shelf. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, but with the modern My era, that really muddied it. Mm. I think oh. 25th anniversary Snake Eyes version one, the one that came in the gift box with the other guys, 
still holds up. I like oh, the goodie. fact that he's in that muted gray with the glossy goggles. And uh, that's yeah. a whole... Com- but that in itself is a whole conversation as well. Bart Goodness. says, Snakes should have been kept a commando, but a really good martial artist. Yes, keep his ninja history, but after all, he is in the military, so that needs to be forward. I like that. That is cool. Like, give that's what makes him cool. It's like he is a commando with this as with this side of him. Not, it's all ninja whammer jammer all the time. Um, Does he carry a sword, Paul? I. You know what? It's cool if he carries a sword by all means, <laughs> but don't make it all. But use it in a tactical way. There's lots of ways to approach a sword in in this kind of realm. I mean, Metal Metal Gear handles it quite well as well, and Metal Gear also doesn't knows when to lean in and lean out of that um bart so, uh, agrees i liked what bart said here as well that's how a first sergeant is he's like a dad you don't cross never get on your first shirt's bad side but he is still the guy who has your back thank you that's actually mm. cool to hear um you know uh, ryan says i like storm shadow and snake eyes but when they brought in that group it was a bridge too far yeah see like ninja it's force a thing yeah ninja force uh Oh, I love Ninja oh, sh- Force, sh- but for the face, wrong reasons. Paul. Yeah, no, no, yeah. no, dude. You, you, you do not say uh to Ninja Force. Neither, neither of us do. I don't, in fact, Rob, I don't think you have anything bad to say about Ninja Force other than those vehicles. Um, yeah, for sure. That was but totally our jam, guys. Sorry. For sure. With the latter, the latter day G.I. Joe fans up in here. But it does hurt the, but it does hurt the comic a little bit. I, I, I can agree to that. But I'd still love it. Still the love comic it. was punch drunk, punch drunk and hitting him to the ropes by that point. Yeah. Like it was that was just easy money. Anyway, <laughs> sorry guys. Yeah. Anyway. Next category. Uh the Joe or Cobra, that was your first. Yeah, easy round. Uh lifeline for me. Uh Paul. sci-fi for me. hmm Version yeah. one. Version one. All green. Okay. Very good. <laughs> Rob, your avatar, no doubt. Well, I feel like it wasn't him. I mean, I was just kind Ooh. of trying to think back, and I really, I'm not sure. I think it is Target. It's either Target <gasps> or Annihilator. What? Because I'm pretty sure I got them all essentially in the same year, or the mm-hmm. you know the over a period of maybe two years. Um, but I am pretty sure it's Target or it was one or the other. Um, Target or Annihilator was was my first. I'm not Amazing. sure. I mean, I think my original. You know, the thing kind of drew me to G.I. Joe was, you know, the faceless uh, enemy. Um, they just look really cool in sci-fi. And, and, and coming from being a fan of, of He-Man and uh, Thundercats, um, you know, with this sci-fi crazy shit going on, I think definitely the Cobra appealed more initially. Hmm. Do you remember, Rob, after we saw Terminator 2 Judgment Day and having the liquid metal silver baddie T-1000, that when we saw Target's face shield, we were like, oh, he's liquid metal too. He's yeah. like gold. <laughs> you just pour, pour out of that face mask. <laughs> Amazing. That's interesting. Yeah, That's actually sure. very interesting. Well, we were big time into Terminator. Like everyone was a Terminator. Ja-jung, ja-jung, ja-jung. We'd take our super soakers and sort of marauder through the yard, shooting at uh, t- T-1000s with like a... I suppose it was a molten steel gun, basically. Yeah. We were hosing them down with molten steel. <laughs> I used to love Thinking that about arcade it now, cabinet. That's so man. dangerous. <laughs> Amazing. Um, okay, cool. Good one. Uh, thanks, anyone, everyone in the chat for chiming, chiming in with theirs. Um, the Joe Cobra that is your favorite. Ha! Huh? Now, this is interesting. Ooh. Is it your favorite figure, your favorite character? I answered for favorite character and that would undeniably be stalker interesting wow. yeah i and i have to trouble back with up this. <laughs> on the figure well yeah. just to back back it up to the, the figure as well i know last episode i listened back and i was like i was cringing man because you were slinging some mud at the og 13 stalker yeah <laughs> when the internet came into our lives rob and i placed an order on an online E. Taylor, um, and used my dad's credit card, and we paid him cash um, for five Joes. And there were splits between us. Uh, Rob got three, and I got two. I got the two more expensive ones. Rob got the three kind of the El, El Chipos. Chipos. 
less exactly. offensive one. You got Spirit and Chuckles, uh, Chuckles and Falcon, and mm. I, I bought Duke and Stalker V1 or 1.5. Figures never showed up. <laughs> and it was in that era when you know we didn't have internet banking we couldn't easily check if the money had come off my dad's card but either way we had paid him so pff, whatever but yeah i just i remember that figure having some serious allure for me because the, the character was a legend certainly in the comic books he was like yes this guy's the best i want to so be underappreciated in the cartoon as well yeah, well the cartoon was tracking the product releases whereas yeah. Harmer was definitely playing to his his darlings and stalker was he was just definitely like one of them the best leader mm. the philosophical joe but deadly man absolutely deadly like could hold his own alongside snake eyes any day of the week anyways um well, so yeah my easy answer stalker well dave and i always uh regarded stalker as the leader of the gi joes when we were younger, like he was always to us the boss, like in a lot of ways. Uh, and I'm talking about the talking commandos stalker. He just had this <laughs> boss presence to him. I think the video game coming out at around the same time sort of um, enforced that a bit more because Stalker's this is Atlantis factor. That yeah, is correct. Yes, yeah, Stalker's. Yeah, he's the guy he's in the cutscenes. Yeah. Hmm. So, and, and please, by all means, I mean, uh, I love Stalker. I think he's an, an incredibly cool character. Um, I sp and I really love the Arctic Stalker. That's what, probably one of my favorite Joe toys. Um, but yeah, man, sorry. I just I hope it didn't derail. I just wanted to add to what you're saying. Uh, I suppose, well, I've got the, the mic. And I wouldn't change the OG for a re-release for the mm. simple reason that warts and all, that's how he came out initially. Like, I don't think I'd want an update. There's some mystique to him that, like, don't, it doesn't impact on me. I don't feel like he looks out, um, you know, next to his 1985 kind of brethren. Like, he looks like Stalker should. Simple. I mean, I said what I said in the last episode. Um, I know you did. So, yeah. I heard so it I on the replay. Good. I mean, I don't... I like, and you know where I'm... I, I think everybody knows where I'm coming from with that. So, I'm not going to say anything about him now. <laughs> Ain't As broke, don't fix it. As for favorite character, toys, everything in G.I. Joe, this is very, very, very difficult for me. It's incredibly difficult for me, actually, because I can be very seasonal with my characters um, and especially especially the toys, because I will glomp onto a figure, for example, and just kind of be like, wow, this is my favorite. Like, as you heard earlier in this episode, I've really been enjoying low light version two. I've, I just think it's such a cool character. It's just such a cool toy. And just it got me back into Lowlight again, who is a cool character and is a character I like. Um, I would say the best way for me to answer this is to go with my consistently favorite choice, my consistent favorite choice. And that would be Storm Shadow. Um, just because I just really like, I, I've enjoyed growing with that character. Um, at first, I always thought Storm Shadow was like the B team to Snake Eyes. And then as I've grown older, I've just kind of found that Snake Eyes is kind of the B team to Storm Shadow. Storm Shadow is a lot more developed, a lot more interesting for me. Um, I've really fallen in love with the toys a lot. Uh, you know, I had that great, I mean, the version 2 only came into my life recently, but it was a toy that I coveted it that I wanted for a long time. The version 1 is one of my absolute favorite G.I. Joe toys of all time. So I would say it's Storm Shadow, um, but it's not it's difficult to say that that is my absolute ultimate answer because it is seasonal i kind of feel like my favorite gi joe should always come second to to storm shadow and right now i i'm really feeling that my outback my tiger force outback is my favorite gi joe toy at the moment and i know that when i receive my version one zartan i know i'm gonna love that because i love love zartan <laughs> as well so it's very hard for me to to actually nail it down to one thing but I think uh, I think everybody's kind of got the gist of who my favorites are. It's everybody, but wild card and <laughs> major altitude and wind, um, yeah, wind chill, armadillo, wind <laughs> and mate and what wild boar. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. mine is definitely is definitely scoop. 
Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. I realize what? we left one out. Most oh, underrated. I was about to say. <laughs> oh, sorry. Most underappreciated Joe or Cobra. Uh, I think that the Sky Storm is a hell of a lot of fun conceptually. The execution leaves something to be desired, but a lot of people hate it. And I think that's undeserved. I think a jet powered stopped rotor helicopter is so fantastical and yet has roots in reality that like, yeah, man, I loved playing with that thing as a child. Mm. Mm. The idea of a helicopter that could take off and land vertically and get into tight spots and hover and maneuver like a helicopter, but could then just kick in the jets and blast out of there. So much fun. Much more fun than playing with a dragonfly. Shots fired. Then fighting hot, words. Hot takes up in Joburg. But think about it. One toy that is both a jet and a helicopter at the same time. Loved it. I even tolerated that silly pilot. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Rob, what is your what do you think is the most underrated G.I. Joe? Figure, I think oh, GI probably, Joe Cobra, whatever, whatever. <laughs> probably because it's so overshadowed by the original version. Um, but I think the second and uh, well, I mean, they re released it again as a third version, uh, I think. Um, but the second version, I think, is so cool in its own right, but it kind of gets completely overshadowed by the original version. And for me, that would be Eels. Eels version two is a really cool figure, it feels more <laughs> to shark. what the to the word eels you know he kind of looks mm. more aquatic he looks more like what a cobra uh, what i'd imagine a sci-fi slightly into the future uh water trooper would look like um mm. not taking anything away from the original eels the eels look fan absolutely crazy amazing they look more real world uh, they look more i suppose sinister more formidable but, but no robot shock two, but no Come robot on. shock and no <laughs> fins on the actual character itself. I think it just adds something to it that makes it look more sci-fi and looks more like a Cobra Trooper. Um, at least, you know, as, as the line kind of developed more, they had these very distinct versions of what things were. Um, Jason from Order of Battle Pod is applauding very loudly right now. <laughs> because the eel, I mean, I'm not saying the eels, eel, original eels aren't, aren't good. They are. I mean, it's a fantastic design. Really it's, I think it's a universally good design, but I think a design that's underappreciated overall in Jojo would be Eels version 2 because they look to me more Cobra-esque, more specific to Cobra than, say, the original Eels do, you know, despite the fact they have the Cobra symbol and all that stuff. Um, yeah, so for I me, think I think they Eels look like version a Spider-Man sort of C-grade villain. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. The Razor! <laughs> I could definitely see that, but um, I think for me they're underappreciated. Uh, I think they should get more appreciation, and I'm sure there are people out there who do appreciate them. Oh, Jason's building an army, and he's got an well, army of go. sharks too. I and hope he'll leave a couple, so cool. you know, for other people to buy as well. You know, so they Forget can also appreciate it. this cool figure. Forget about <laughs> it. He sees, he buys. He sees, he buys. It's a seafood, <laughs> seafood diet. He sees it, he eats it. <laughs> sea cobra <laughs> diet. Uh, Paul, yeah. what, what do you think is underappreciated? What what should people love more than they do? Ryan Sweeney <laughs> suggested Footloose. Um, mm. Footloose is definitely one of them. Uh, I also only recently got hold, my hands on one of those. Um, thanks to, Did you to Bart helping me. Did you kick off the Sunday Blues? <laughs> <laughs> God, you know I hate that movie and that song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, but Bacon, Bacon, isn't he beautiful? He's a beautiful, I don't beautiful know. man. I, I just can't. I don't even have memory of watching this film. I've watched it. It's just, it's traumatic. It's like um, <laughs> Wild Card. Um, it just Jesus. doesn't sit there. Guys, yeah, Footloose is definitely a character that I think should get a lot more attention. Uh, there's some amazing detail on that on that dude. And wow, like what a cool looking soldier. Um, my figure, well, my choice for underrated G.I. Joe figure... Oof. Um, I'm going to go with a vehicle this time. And it's mm. the same answer I put on Facebook. Uh, the Locust. Uh, probably for the same reasons uh, Stephen loves the Skystorm so much. Uh, it's fun to play with. It's just really, really cool. Well, not exactly the same reasons. I just, I just, when Stephen was talking, I was like, yes, it's fun. <laughs> um, the Locust is fun. It's, it's really well made. It's really well put together. It feels robust. 
you know, uh, if you compare it to something like the Fang 2, it definitely feels like more of a toy than the Fang 2 does, for example. Um, I don't know, just there's something about it. It's just got a lot of character, a lot of weight to it. It's got detail. I love the little bomb dropping feature. Uh, I had a lot of fun with it in my youth. I continue to have a lot of fun with it now. And yeah, it's it's just easy and it's a great toy. And I think it's terribly underrated. I think more people should be excited about the Locust, personally. So yeah, and uh, yeah, that, that would be, I, I'm going to keep it at that. I, there's a few more I could say, actually, but I'm just going to keep it at that. I think it's easier before I start going down a whole rabbit hole of talking about Crocmaster and Crystal Ball and all the other crazy people. So, yeah. Seems Tim uh, sees your Eels V2 and raises you an Undertow, which, yeah, I think Undertow is probably going to get my vote as a, as a cooler frogman. Just kind of doesn't have to suspend disbelief quite as much. Like, how is the Eel V2 breathing? Anyways, let me not have a go. <laughs> Next category. Which Joe or Cobra can you play with over and over? Interesting. Like, it's something different to your favorite figure necessarily. Just something that your hands love to find and put in vehicles, perhaps, or just display on, on their own. Like, which figure is it for you? For me, it's Dusty. I think that guy just looks fantastic in a Tomahawk. He looks fantastic on a Silver Mirage. He looks fantastic just hauling his ruck through the dunes. I love photographing him. The soft goods really elevates him. The fact that he looks so uh, uh, anonymous. He's got this anonymity about him. The camo paint makes him an everyman and a no man. He could be anybody. And he's got even less character than, say, Footloose. Uh, sorry, not Footloose. Hit and Run. Hit and Run's got those white, white irises. And Dusty doesn't have that detail. So, but the details he does have, fantastic. All those tampo patches, he's got a little American flag on his chest. He's got that little unit the patch trees. on his, on his, yeah. yeah, so good. And yeah, I, the fact that I now have a bipod, thank you, Analog Toys. Thank you, Tony. I, yeah, this is a, this is my guy, man. Dusty, always. And uh, as somebody who only recently got an actual proper Dusty, yeah, you know, when I say proper Dusty, non Tiger Force Dusty, I totally see where you're coming from with that guy. He like, just fits in everywhere. Mm. Like he's just the best. <laughs> so <his> yeah. Though. <laughs> Even though uh, they well, continue um, to put him in the fucking spaceship in the cartoon. Yeah, py pyramids <laughs> of darkness would uh, have you convinced otherwise. Yeah. Dusty in space. Ah, uh, Rob, who who, who do you like who, to touch? Who do you like to touch? Yes. Whose bottom do you pinch while you make pew pew sounds with his gun? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I mean, it, it, it's, well, I always carry Scoop with me. Scoop is always with me. And recently, I mean, now that I've added a uh, countdown to that. But I think, I mean, the character that I always loved just kind of playing with and he just kind of feels like I can do anything with him would be Chuckles, actually. Hmm. Um, he just He just feels like an everyman, but I know he's in G.I. Joe. And, and I like that about him. Um, he just feels like a character that you, I can also put into almost anything and you can just kind of go, go ahead and do it. Um, I think I play oh, yeah. a lot more loose with him than with <laughs> than with, with other characters. You know, it's like he can, he can be a pilot if he wants to be. You know, he's a, he's a secret agent, essentially. Mm. Um, undercover agent. I mean, what he can do, I mean, can be just whatever he needs to be able to do in a story. Um, also, his um, holster bond. doesn't hurt. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, the holster oh. helps as well. You, know, you can kind of actually keep a gun on him, and he doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be in his hands constantly. Yeah. You know, or in a little baggie separate from him, or in a little exactly. box. <laughs> yeah, I guess Chuckles doing grocery shopping. You know, exactly. you can't he's have like Dusty doing he's, grocery he's, shopping because you know, he's like from Mars, motherfucker. He's <laughs> open carrying in the, in the grocery store. You know, no one gives him shit when he wants like twenty slices of ham instead of five. You know. Exactly. You know. sure. Hey, bro, there ain't <laughs> no grocery shops out in the sandbox where Dusty's operating. Just a couple yeah. of Bedouin tents, some oil fields, maybe an enemy bunker. He's, yeah, man. he's chewing on cactuses with water. I look at that figure <laughs> and I'm just transported to 
all the incredible games that could be played with him. Just like these epic slogs. Yeah. No, just epic did you, slogs. <laughs> did you ever get um, the World Peacekeeper's Desert Camel for yourself? I can't remember. Yeah, sure. Okay, good. Perfect go. accompaniment for Dusty as well. Best, best vehicle and animal companion for Dusty. <laughs> the bonus is Sandstorm. Uh, shame. Yeah, I was about to say, poor Sandstorm. Yeah, like yep. actually if you think about it dusty is like dusty force because you got dusty he's camel and sandstorm they're like a, a full-on unit you know it's d camel and whatever the hell sandstorm's meant to be <laughs> metal gear joke <laughs> metal gear joke, joke. maybe five percent <laughs> people take that joke and laugh at it <laughs> that's fine i care about that you know okay paul do you have a, an answer Mm. your hands find oftentimes um like if i look at my desk now for example i've got you guys are going to be surprised by this but i've got barbecue um barbecue. The vintage barbecue and that's inspired by the classified version i've got version two snake uh, storm shadow here as well um guys i i really dig um taking old storm shadow around and making swishy ninja sounds and and whatever it's because <laughs> he's really fun and easy to do that with but honestly, uh, and, and this is kind of like an answer that's also a non-answer, I like to keep a troop builder with me. So I usually like to grab like a Viper or an Alley Viper or um, my Undertow. Just have them die over and over and over again. Over and over again. <laughs> no, I just, like, it's weird. Like, I got that um, Cobra infantry dude, okay? And I thought, okay, by now I would have put him away, but I actually have that figure in rotation he's on my desk quite often i'm often on little missions with him like shooting stuff with his cool little dragon off he's badass man he's like such a cool toy to play with so i really enjoy like troop builders um and i really enjoy any gi joe that holds its gun really comfortably you know and rob said chuckles and and i gotta agree with with rob on chuckles because chuckles if i want to take a photo of a vehicle or something and i want to put a joe in there you can't go wrong with putting Chuckles in pretty much any vehicle, <laughs> you know. Even in a Cobra vehicle, it looks right. It's like here's Chuckles stealing a a hiss, you know. <laughs> you know he, I mean? he looks he, right because he basically doesn't blend in with anything. Anything, right? <laughs> That's so, your point. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Basically, he's yeah, he's like the Magnum PI of the line. I agree with that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really loving my troop builders at the moment. I'm uh, especially the Vipers. Uh, ever since I got that gun, the the Vipers actual Viper gun, I would say that's my definitive answer right now today for this mm. episode. It has been the Viper with his gun. It's just been so much fun. He's got his backpack. He's got his gun. He's running around. He's shooting like invisible stuff. He's shooting GI Joes in the legs and whatever because <laughs> they're main characters. He can't kill GI Joes, but we're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? Put them in a wheelchair, but you can't kill them. Fine. You can't kill them. Uh, all right. A Joe or Cobra that surprised you. I'm surprised at how much I never knew I needed it. But now that I have it, I'm so glad I do. But the Triple T Sergeant Slaughter. I had the Warthog Sergeant Slaughter from way back. Because I had a Warthog as a, as a child. Now getting the... Essentially the Sunbow accurate version of Sarge. I held off on it for the longest time because I was like, I don't need a Sarge that is less tactical than the one that I've always had. Like, how's this one going to shuffle its way to the front of the shelf? And Warthog Sarge, you know, steps down uh, from his podium. Um, but it does. That animated cred gives it a lot of weight to me. It's a very attractive figure. It's a very basic figure. He looks like he's breaking in re recruits. He's not front you know he's not on the front lines and something that i hadn't realized but has made so evident to me now the fact that the, because the hat is not removable it's a far better shape to his head the removable mm. accessory kind of has to cheat itself a little bit it um isn't quite as i don't know svelte as the molded accessory and that's just true of all molded hats the second it's a, a, a removable piece, it's compromised. Mm -hmm. It being a unremovable piece, it looks good. The same could be said for Rakondo's slouch hat. Like if that was a removable piece, it would not look nearly as good. It just hugs the, the figure's 
well, the extrapolated line of a figure's head better. So, yeah. Shout-outs to my man, Zazel. This figure <laughs> came into my life courtesy of him. Um, definitely threw the focus on Sarge and made me painfully aware of the fact that I needed the Triple T Sarge in my life. We're on a slippery slope with this one when it comes to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, because as Steve has mentioned uh, on multiple Everything episodes... Everything surprises Paul. It's like, whoa, I didn't know I'd like whoa. this, but I love it. And I, I love it. Yeah, ex exactly. Wait, you get a right? wild card. I was like, Paul doesn't know it yet, but he loves this toy. Um, or he's gonna. Uh, and like, okay, so that's my cross to bear. And oh, wow, such a burden. Um, guys, I didn't know I needed this in my life till I had it. And it's a classified G.I. Joe. In fact, it's classified Joes mostly in general uh when i got the cobra officer or the cobra infantryman in classified form and then shortly followed by a cobra viper in classified form and then lady j just i'm and i'm not like i'm just highlighting those but they are by no means like a major exception to the rule here but that but the one thing that does stand out is having that infantryman that cobra trooper I didn't know I, like, I wanted one. I was like, yeah, they're great, you know, but I'd kind of, you know, you guys know the story if you've been listening to the show. But when I have that in my hand and I've got the weapons on him and his helmet that comes off and and I'm just like, oh, wow. Let me see if I can get Zartan to kill this guy in interesting ways. <laughs> and I had so much fun. That figure, that toy has unlocked classified Joes for me. And now all of the classified Joes have a, a, a much brighter spotlight on them because of that. And yeah, that, that, that would be my toy recently that's like, wow, I didn't know I needed it until I had it. And now I'm so glad that I've got more classified figures because of this dude. And um, also, this is going to be kind of, because it's kind of a tie. So it's like the Cobra Trooper and also my most recent uh, Christmas present, which is Barbecue. You know, when I saw Barbecue, I was like, wow, he's a really great figure. You guys will know. You heard it on the episode. But I also felt I couldn't get it. And thank, fa thankfully, Matt, thank you so much for helping Barbecue find his way to me. Uh, dude, you have no idea how cool that toy is when you actually have one in hand. It's, it just makes sense. And that's actually why my vintage Barbecue is out because I was showing Celia. I was like, oh, look, look how cool they are. Look how, like, you know, how, like, this respects the original one. And it's just amazing. So there there's uh, at least two figures that I didn't know I needed them in my life until I had them. And I was like, wow, how did I miss out on these? So yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's me for that one. So I know it's not vintage, but you know, I'm always in love with the vintage toys. Still so. a giant Joe slash Cobra. Yeah. I think it definitely counts. Yeah. And at least I haven't knocked any of your choices out of the running. Cause you, I don't think any of you guys are going <laughs> to mention classified choice. <laughs> Definitely, definitely not. Well, mine, I never knew I would want this toy. I don't think I ever really gave it much thought until I saw it in a toy shop in America. And I think one of you guys also bought him. My version was better, I believe. Um, Big Boa. Um, he's like a dude who punches shit. And it's like, I think I never thought I, he would be a cool character. And then I saw him in person. I was like, this is a really cool figure. I want this guy a lot. Um <laughs> And then I just bought him, you know? I mean, I could have bought uh, another scoop. I could have had, you know, three three extra scoops by the time I got home, but I bought a big bow instead. And he's an absolutely fantastic figure. And it's cool that they kind of, he, it goes all the way, you know? I mean, he comes mm. with the, the gloves. He comes with something to punch. You know, he doesn't come with any guns. He's just, he is what he is. And I think that's really cool. Um. Yeah, I, I was very surprised that I'd want this figure. I mean, he has no guns. He just comes with gloves. And I was just like, I suppose it, yeah, it does take me back to kind of like Rocky Balboa and enjoying those movies growing up. But I, I really never thought that I would want a big bow until I saw him in person. And <laughs> yeah, I, I own him, so. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> big bow is great, man. Yeah, uh, also, he's fantastic. It, if you guys watch Element X, I know you guys have, but for those of our listeners who may have missed out on Element X, I just love uh, Cody and um, it's uh, damn 
I, I, I know it's for sure it's Cody, but I'm trying to remember the other gentleman that worked with him. Corey. Uh, Corey, yes, when they <laughs> did uh, that little excerpt. But like, oh, the, dude, they just bring Big Bo to life, man. That robot voice is so great. <laughs> it's the best. That's well, how Big Bo sounds to me forever now. So Corporal Lang makes no uh, secret of the fact that he loves Big Bo and mm. Cody, he's a big Sarge fan. And I think it goes both ways. Like both gents actually love the other one as well. So it was a match made in heaven. Um, if you're scratching your head, listener, scroll on down. I think I should have it in the description one day. Maybe. I think it's it. Anyways, if, you, <laughs> if, you're looking, if you look up Element X on the G.I. Jobo channel, um, it should be kind of in the middle of that epic collaboration. Just watch uh, all of them. I lightning mean, rounds, yeah, gents, you, you because the start. hour is late. Uh, yes. Let's, let's do Cobra or Joe. That is your guilty pleasure. I'm going to say the buzz ball. Nah. Because the idea of a gigantic saw blade, like just tearing through an infantry squad, is terrifying and something that I want to use to greater effect uh, in a player motion. Because this thing, it's so out there, but it's horrifying. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm just win, like win some respect. Too. <laughs> yes, Rob. In that canary yellow. Um, yes, so <laughs> I want to win some respect back for the buzz ball. It's awesome. It deserves it. That's Paul. off my table now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I've seen some great comments in the, the chat already. Some guys have mentioned, Gaz has mentioned Crystal Ball. Um, and then Casey uh, has mentioned the Pogo. <clears throat> I, I would love to say that... <clears throat> Pardon me. Anything at all? Uh, <clears throat> for me to say uh, the pogo is a guilty pleasure would be an absolute lie because I absolutely love the pogo. Um, but a guilty pleasure for me would be Mega Marines, um, mm. all the the Mega Marines, and more specifically um, my Bio Viper, my Mega Monster. Uh, yeah, that, that is a bit sense. of a guilty pleasure. I think everybody, I think a lot of people hate these toys. Um, but I've really been having a lot of fun with it, probably for the same reason I enjoy a classified Cobra Trooper. It's something big for my G.I. Joes to shoot and kill, and it's great. Nah. <laughs> I love having monsters for the Joes to kill for a change. And that has been my guilty pleasure. Although I don't... <clears throat> Hold on. This frog in my throat just won't let her... <laughs> there we go. Um, but I don't really believe in guilty pleasures. I think you just like stuff or you don't and i don't yeah. think you should be ashamed just, of liking stuff you know? it's all pleasure in the end you know At the end um so end. my my non-guilty guilty pleasure would be <laughs> uh what is it battle core battle core uh, wild bill uh he's he looks like a confederate you know soldier cowboy man it it looks ridiculous i think it, once again he's like the the eel of of gi joe um his original <laughs> version is so much better but this one is just so over the top he's just he's come home from you know reenacting some sort of um civil war era thing and he's like okay guys i'm ready to take the flight let's go i've still got my my wooden gun here and i, I can help you out <laughs> <laughs> they had actual guns in the uh, late 1800s well yeah 1800s so <laughs> yeah they, they has did to but use I mean... a log <laughs> beyond me the log shaped guy is just ridiculous uh, but i love him uh, i think he's just he's fun uh, maybe we'd be using that gun as a gun when it should really just be a peace pipe like we've yeah. been holding it wrong all these years he's he's shooting up a different <laughs> way you know <laughs> dude i think that that toy that sculpt would be amazing if it had the original wild bull colors you know from mm. version one Oh, it would be interesting, uh, yeah. I think the Sadly, colors... they missed a trick. They just deepened yeah. the blue on a re-release that came with a tan dragonfly, which was then renamed mm. the Locust. But that's yeah. besides the point. Like, they missed an opportunity to just do him up in green. Mm. Boo I that. think, yeah, the, yeah the, 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 the sculpting is really good, but you could, yeah, be a, a better color with it. Great head sculpt mm. on that figure, though. Uh, in fact, all-round great sculpt. Um, actually, but yeah, dude, uh, I, I can understand uh, why it's a non guilty, guilty pleasure. Yes, definitely <laughs> been getting those 90s proportions which fly in the face of his 83 physique. So, last but not least, 
what is our favorite vehicle aircraft or playset? So we make this a, a quick fire round. Yes. Okay. So Stephen can go to sleep. Um, oh, that was quick, Paul. Uh, hold on, hold on. I need to breathe for this one. Night Jeez. Raven, MCC Bug, Warthog. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's just the quickest way I can answer that. Nice. I would say well, well, or Cobra Mamba. Those, those would be my two favorites. Which one, dude? I, I I'm gonna go with the Cobra Mamba because you can just have so much more fun in the sky than than you know in the, in, in the river. <sighs> Proves my point. Um, Paul, <laughs> the MCC. Yeah, the Mobile Command Center. Yeah, Corrin? that one. Yeah, I said Night Raven, Mobile Command Center, Cobra Bug. I heard you, <laughs> but you, you're going to put the MCC in such esteemed company as the Bug and the Night Raven? Oof. Oof. Absolutely. Yeah, like for me, I mean, I mean, the journey of getting that thing kind of puts it up. It's one of my grails. Know? And in fact, it's here in, in, the, in Bravo with me. Okay, it's in the cupboard because CD was like, Please take it I'm out of the lounge that now. Out. <laughs> <laughs> in the sewing box. Yeah, I don't cause... want people knowing I can sew. <laughs> no, well, no, she she does because we've got one set up in the lounge, the sewing machine, but and we not actually the have MCC. got a real. Come but on. not the MCC. Yeah. You no, gotta I get think rid of that man. sewing machine too. If you can't have your sewing machine, then neither can she. And you know what? You know what is it like the 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 linking point between all three? I think all three of them are fun vehicles and fun play sets. Mm. No, disagree. <laughs> Why do you don't think the Night Raven's a fun playset, <laughs> or do you think the MCC is a shit vehicle? I think the Night Raven is not a playset. Mm. But I think it totally is. You can have a yeah, a because bunch you have guys, guys sneaking it. around on top of it and stuff. Not just that; it's got panels that open. It's got the ammo that drops at the bottom. You can have guys like you know loading it up Load. and talking a whole bunch of shit. You can have like GI Joe sneaking and sabotaging it. You can have like a whole story or, that plays around the, or the Raven. Just like um, what is it, Capcom versus X Men? You can have a mm. stage, like a, a fighting stage that's set on top of it. Exactly. Ah. There, just like the black the Blackbird. Yeah, now Steven's thinking level. outside the box. Okay, cool. Uh, what have we got in the chats? Uh, we definitely have Saints on Cinema, a.k.a. Tim. He has the black Awe Striker from the 2000s run as a favorite. Man, that Awe Striker mold is just awesome. Really that never gets good. old. And for Joe Hunter 73, the TTBP. Thank you, Joe Hunter, for the topic. Yeah, it's hmm, been I think... enlightening. Yeah, we kind of reconnected with some things that we've said before, but I mean, I suppose with the passing of the years, um, the opinions change. do change. Um, or you grow. Know, it, exactly, we definitely have grown. Look, I don't think I've ever put it on the record that I think the whale is overrated, but that thing's no, appealing. No, that wasn't in our unpopular opinions episode, no. <laughs> Look, it's just, it's the, the, the deafening roar of people wanting it. It's always up there in the top one or two and no, for I just... sure but i think they see the potential of, of what it could be um i mean I, I i really do love the whale but i mean it can be very finicky especially with those fins at the back i think it, it there are ways of improving it and um hopefully haslab can can make it better you know than they did with the the sky striker you know ruining the so they probably but... won't and they'll probably the... silence censor and otherwise ignore uh, members of the fan base but that's okay they're the big guys <laughs> they can't, they've it's, made it's a lot tough. more people happy than they have unhappy you know except for the people who want ketchup and tomato sauce or whatever those guys <laughs> are called yeah well there, there is a there is a an instagram petition well i caught one from the gi joe nation hashtag uh, about trying to get um Mustard uh, or the condom. It's not, it's, not, it's not the first. It probably won't be the last. Um, Look, and no, well, power to them. I hope they get them. No, no, no. I'm going to say, yeah, of course, power oh. to them. But like asking for free stuff, like when they've already inserted three extra Cobras that they weren't banking on, come on. It's going to start eating into their profit margins big time. And mm -hmm. Hasbro is all about bank, baby. They got shareholders. But, They're a public But also, let's, if you wanted those things, uh, I suppose, yeah, people should have paid more, but I don't know. Uh, but let's try and, I do want to shine a light on a little bit of a good deed that I feel Hasbro has done um, for uh, Matt, uh, Matt Mylar or Matt Mylar. 
Uh, if you guys mm. don't know who I'm talking about, he is arguably one of the best toy photographers on the internet. Like, duh, the dude's stuff is amazing. But Hasbro recently, I don't want to use the term gifted, but sponsored, gifted him some, um, uh, I think it's the Alley Viper and the Bat um, for some pho uh, photography that he's done. So that's really cool of you, Hasbro. Thank you for sending some awesome toys to an awesome content creator. And also to Terry Turner. Who has and been plastic battles and plastic battles yes and full force as far yes. as i can tell I, i'm sure they've sent to um uh special missions force as well i might be mistaken but yeah hasbro has been showing some love and that's good because these are the guys that will play with the toys well what am i saying you have seen the content i mean the stuff is out there hasbro you made a smart move rather give it that to rather they did that than give it to some influencer who's like oh yeah gi joe figure <laughs> i've got like fifty thousand followers <laughs> cool it's a gi joe toy yeah you know um it, rather it went to somebody who makes amazing photo of uh, you know amazing set piece photography and oh dude it's amazing so thank you hasbro that was really cool of you you know, and also thank you to the content creators. It's cool to see what you've done with that stuff. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, Random. man. Go crazy. Go, go, go. What, what's what's yeah. definitely not going to drive me crazy uh, is this year. Or maybe it will. I don't know. Um, it's a new year, 2022. It couldn't be any worse than 2021. Oh, God, he said <laughs> Oh, how could you, Stephen? And, uh, you know. <laughs> well, well, to say something on our way out. Um, so this morning, or at least um, uh, the parliament buildings in Cape Town were on fire. And I think Oof. by now they've actually put them out. Um, a large degree of the older part um, of, of parliament was burned up. It got quite close to the actual chamber where they actually do their, you know, their, their talking. Um, but I believe by now they have put it out, but it has definitely done a ton of damage to the, the Houses of Parliament here in South Africa. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> My Excellent. Plan. It's coming together. Yeah. <laughs> the year is starting out so good. <laughs> uh, politicians, they must all burn. Well, the thing is they're on holiday. They only come back in February. Uh. Now they've got to wait a bit longer to come back. You're just giving yeah. them a longer holiday, your hope for the year. <laughs> well, at least one of them will go Job back is a holiday. So, uh, anyway. Burn it all down. Burn it all down. But you know what you can't burn down? Our Teespring store, where we have fantastic <laughs> merchandise based off <laughs> G.I. Joe Berg uh, designs inspired by G.I. Joe. Can't burn that down. It's online. So if you want to get some <laughs> of them cool merch, Go grab them. They're awesome. They're amazing. Uh, good quality. Um, absolutely awesome. And something else that um, has a burning desire and is very well desired. Paul, if you if you're watching the watching this on YouTube, Paul is showing off one of the many incredible designs that we have. That is a uh, classic uh, eel. Scuba, yeah, a uh, scuba, scuba, scuba trooper, snake, evil <laughs> scuba snake. <laughs> trooper it's absolutely amazing paul is is very snake-like in his, his movements it's fantastic um yeah so go go check out our merchandise and if you love listening to us and and you have a have a little extra if you if you don't enjoy having too many coffees each month and trying to cut down on that coffee or that energy drinks you can throw us a little bucks our way we do this all for free we absolutely love doing it we will always do it for free but if you want to support us and help us grow uh we are on patreon and we're joined by a fantastic group of amazing people who listen to us live every week people keep coming back I, it's amazing <laughs> it's fantastic we love all of these Look people these and sexy people Oof. we have two pages now <laughs> we have we've stenciled them onto at least you know the more parts of this this mystery of vehicle the tomahawk. wall it's the tomahawk. Tomahawk. surely it's the tomahawk it must be no step, still, no step, no step. Shout out to Buttface69. I still love that name. <laughs> I love that name. <laughs> That's Lord, awesome. Really. Much and if you do miss the live recording sesh, don't worry. We still got your back because you can listen to the raw, unedited audio. I know you love it uh, for a full 24 hours before it's released. But hey, it'll always be released. So get it for free. Absolutely. And yeah. tell us what you think of it. 
uh, on on YouTube, uh, on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, give us a like. Facebook. Or dislike. Give us something. Yeah. Give us something. Tell us why you didn't like it so we can hopefully improve and make something different. And Or we'll just ignore you. I don't know. Maybe we think the way we do things is the best way ever and we're never going to change. But we might consider it. Um, and yeah, and if you if you want to write us really long emails that we can read out on air, and we probably will read them out, realsouthafricanhero at gmail.com. Um, we love hearing from you guys. Do it. We, we based an entire episode on, on, on someone writing into us. It can happen to you too. Come on. You know you want it. And with that, I think we are out. Closing the chapter on episode 231. We will catch you the same time next week. Yo, Joe Happy New Year. 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 Bloody hell. Guys, we forgot it again. Our in memoriam section. Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Icon, legend. Did you guys ever meet him? No, sadly not. I didn't, unfortunately. Name of a band, Desmond and the Tutus. Have hey. some respect, man. <laughs> no, they're Anyways. a cool band. And he's yeah, a cool, Joe guy. cool man and an amazing man. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, amazing like the one voice of reason in politics mm -hmm. and he wasn't and even in politics Ex yeah no, exactly. yeah and you know ironically sorry i keep i keep cutting you off i'm getting That's good at this fine. you know when you're not around i can actually like cut in a lot more <laughs> rob's found his voice look out <laughs> world <laughs> Too bad I drive StreamYard and I can just do this. <laughs> Speak, Rob. <laughs> Speak some I have more. no voice, but I'm the stream. <laughs> uh, Mr. Anderson. Fantastic. What good is a phone call when you cannot speak? Speak. Mm. Uh, <laughs> How delightful. Mm. Anyways, um, goodbye. Yes. Cheers, cheers. See you in 232. Yeah. <laughs>